welcome to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Broken Arrow hosting the Yukon Millers this evening in a doubleheader. It's going to be a fun-filled night of soccer as both of these teams have a lot to offer. Broken Arrow on the girls' side comes in with a 7-2 mark, 2-1 in the district. Yukon, 9-1, 3-0 in the district. Broken Arrow, third in District 6A, three standings, and they have that 2-1 mark. Yukon, first in 6A, three standings, and they are perfect. For Broken Arrow, they beat Norman North after double overtime into the second round of PKs, playing a man down for 30 minutes. Haley Allen back up to Jay Lynn, saved three PKs and several shots on goal during the game in their last outing. Broken Arrow, for statistical purposes for you, versus Class 6A teams, they are 4-2. and two. They're averaging almost four goals a game and giving up almost one goal a game. They're in their longest win streak right now with four matches. Ten goals is their largest big-time victory. That was against Putnam City North. They played three at home, seven on the road, and we are three wins at home and with four wins on the road. For UConn, their only loss came against Piedmont, one to nothing. The average goals per game, this is going to have to be something that we're going to have to slow them down. They average 6.7 goals a game, and they're giving up 0.9 goals. Longest winning streak, eight matches, 10 goals. They're 11 and one on the season. Eight wins away, two wins at home. So they are obviously a formidable team that's gonna be here at Kirkland Soccer Complex. We'd also like to thank our one club sponsors. First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Since it's St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. Also a reminder, Tiger Threads is located now at the northeast corner at the new event center in the south end zone of Tiger Stadium. It's your go-to spot for all your Tiger gear. They're open 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Their new address is 2200 North 23rd Street, Suite 161. And do not forget, Broken Arrow Public School staff members, they enjoy an additional discount. It's time to welcome in my color analyst for tonight's soccer games. It is Mr. JoJo David. Nice, nice, nice. It is a great day for some weather today. Um, tonight's theme is Jersey Night, as you see, with the fans out there all dressed in their jerseys, some of them the soccer players. But we got some of the Jungle Squad out there in their jerseys. I am also repping a jersey from the middle school days of me being out there and balling, you know, just to get some nostalgia going up. But And for you be... fans out there, I really want to emphasize balling on jo JoJo David. Back in the day, that <laughs> is. Yeah, balling. Um, it's, you know, now it's about that time where, you know, Tigers got to lock in. I mean, now going into district play, these are points that matter a lot more than any of the games. So it's about that time for us to just get ready to go into this game with a good mindset. And well, JoJo, we'll have you go over the starting lineups for both teams. So we'll first start off with UConn. So UConn, they have Jaden Rally at the goalie, Alex Neck at goalie as well. We have um, Kay Jefferson, right wing. We have Haley Solis, Alex Trindle, Ashlyn Sharp, Marley Fort, Alexis Reger, 12th grade, Lily Mosisa, Brooke Berland, Cameron Reger, who is also a freshman starting varsity. Shout out to her. Victoria Gruetsky to end out the starting lineup for the Millers. And back to our Broken Arrow Lady Tigers, we have at goalie, Jalen Hammond, um, Addison Castleberry back at the forward, Nicole Martin, Leah Condry on that front strike area, Evan Shaw, Bailey Martin, Alexis Morellas, Haley Hamphrey, Hannah Anderson, Jillian Hawk, Brooke Dodd, and that's our starting lineup. So the Tigers will look to pick up a big-time win over the top seed so far on the season for UConn. They are, like I said, 9-1 and one on the year, 3-0 and oh in the district. So, JoJo, what are your keys to victory for the Tigers this afternoon here, or this evening, rather, at Kirkland? I mean, like you said with their stats, I mean, this team, they start off, they can get the goals. They are a fast-paced team, one of the best in their district. So, really, Tigers have to keep doing what we have been doing this season. Um, our last game, you know, it turned out pretty well at the end, but at the beginning, we could have had some opportunities against Norman North. We could have got some goals in there, not having to go to PKs. So the number one goal was kind of just staying in it for most of this game, so we don't have to go to PKs. Get those, get that goal, get the, get some goals for us, get some, get some momentum. So that's kind of the game plan. Just stay strong offensively and then stay poised defensively, especially with the big piece Bianca Lopez not playing today. It's going to be hard for us to do that, but got to fill in the gaps with how deep our bench is. Yeah, and this is a team that, you know, I think you can kind of feel where you're at. I know that the season's still a few games left on the year, but for the, this team's so good coming into Kirkland, you're going to get a real test 
push towards the playoffs. 100%. I mean, we faced some great teams this season, too. I mean, that jinx game, kind of what was our weakness in that game, is kind of just like we were great defensively, but offensively always weren't doing too much. So we just got to flip that script today. Well, we'll have soccer in just a moment. It's the National Anthem at Kirkland. Stay with us. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. And it's a windy night here at the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Wind will be blowing all over the place, it appears to be, but that's not going to slow down the Lady Tigers hosting UConn tonight. And like we said, UConn has been a force this season in 6A3. They are 3-0 and in the district, 9-1 and overall. So if you like soccer, you've tuned in to Aerovision for the right game of the week. Jojo. Yeah, a lot of soccer going on today. You know, for all of my soccer fans out there, we saw the Champions League earlier. But before we get to that, let's get into some of the girls' games going on today at this exact same time. We have Eisenhower at Westmore, Southmore at Union, Bishop McGinnis at Emma Santa Fe, Bixby at Sand Springs. Obviously, we're here playing UConn, Putnam City North at Ponca City, Piedmont at Edmond Memorial, Norman North at Owasso, and Moore at Deer Creek. So a heavy lineup for today evening some games. And we'll keep you posted on how those games are fair and throughout the league as well as 6A goes. Also, boys are in action in baseball over at Tiger Stadium, and we'll keep you updated on their game as well. Broken Arrow hosting Enid. They were able to pick up a win yesterday at Enid, so they'll look to pick up the sweep of Enid at home. So we'll try to keep tabs on our boys baseball team as well. But coming up next, it is soccer from Kirkland. One final meeting for both teams. So we'll take one final timeout. And when we come back, we've got soccer with Broken Arrow and UConn. Stay with us. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance.
And welcome back to Kirkland Soccer Complex. 40 minutes on the clock as Broken Arrow gets set to host UConn. Dan Hawk alongside JoJo David on Arrowvision this evening. Broken Arrow wearing the black tops, black bottoms, and UConn white tops, red bottoms. Tigers start off with the ball near midfield, and now they're working it around. I don't think Wynn's going to play too much of a factor for Broken Arrow in this contest. But I do think it could cause some fits as uh, long passes down the field and stuff like that. 100%. But I think this is, I mean, with the sun being out, it's going to be good weather for our Lady Tigers out here. And they, they're they already taking advantage of it, starting off really strong on this um, offensive attack end, playing great defense. And just kind of just got to supply the ball around, find some openings for us, and let's just get it going. That's a good start right there. I think that's Brooke Dodd. That's some sweet passing up the middle there. Good move by Martin. She's going to take the shot, but straight down the middle. That's a good save right there by Jaden Rally of the Millers. And our weather tonight, 73 degrees. Perfect barbecue weather. Oh, now you're making me hungry, Dan. Sorry, I apologize. Jefferson for, for the Millers. Going back near the middle to Gonzalez. Yeah, Tigers just got to apply some pressure early on defensively, kind of make our presence known like we did in the Jinx game, but also got to match that pressure defensively with the offensive attack. And if we can just continuously do that, we can take down this team that's on the top of the throne right now, it feels like, with the with the pace they've been playing at this season. Yeah, 3-0 and on the season. They've been giving so many teams some fits this year. And I was going to deflect off of Leah Kanji right there. She did a great job um, playing some defense on right there on um, Lily Mosisa, but Mosisa ended up kicking it, um, trying to get it out of bounds, and they hit Kondra on the shin. So that's ball to UConn. You know, I'd like to give a shout-out to our students that are helping out with this game on AeroVision as well. Is, uh, we have several different camera crews work in the system tonight. Antonio Hurling, our stream director, and of course, Blake Shy, our producer and engineer, doing all the work to keep us live on AeroVision. So far, Tigers have been playing some strong defense, a lot of takeaways early in this contest. Great pressure by Martin and Hawk right there. It's but Rieger with the ball right now. For Rieger the maintains possession. That one's going to go out. It'll be a throw in. Looks like from UConn. Corner kick for UConn. Oh, corner kick, rather. Got excited for a minute. Yeah, like I said, we're going to go back to who we talk about a lot Jalen Hammond in that goal. Um, a big presence in there going to Grambling State for to play perfect collegiate soccer. So. I mean, uh, every time we have these corner kicks, I feel like the Tigers do a good job not letting anything go towards the net because we have such big presence in there that nothing gets past us. So, And once again, I think should call that one a little aggressive right there. That but was a little push off by Rieger. But well, once again, be. the Tigers' deke comes up. Yep, Castleberry's got it. and She's got two on her, but she's going to stay poised with it. And that's a good cross to Conjure, who has the speed to get to there. But goal is going to step out of the box and get that one. Great great read by the goalie to, to realize that she had the opportunity to get out there and get that ball out instead of letting Condry get the opportunity to get that herself. So Yeah, that pass to Condry, if it was just a little less touch on it, that would have been written a goal all day long. 100%. But Casaberry had the right idea a million percent getting that to Condry. She has the speed to get it, but goalie kind of just matched that with higher IQ. Good defense by Condry. But that's going to stay ball to the Tigers. Who's better, you think, brother or sister for the Condries? Oh, I'm biased to to my guy Lane. So <laughs> I, I, I grew I grew grew up with him, so we we also have Justin Pruitt in here, one of the football coaches. You know, he he might have something to say about that as well. And he's probably on the same side as me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have fun in the BA family, that's for sure. Nothing like being a tiger. Nothing like it. Well actually you were you were a Bronco, that's what you were. It's true. Yeah. And, uh, Good give and go right there from Dodd to Castleberry. And we've got numbers going down the field. My high school mascot, JoJo, was the Lewiston Bengals. Purple and gold, LSU. Bengals. And we've got some of the boys soccer players waving up here in the booth. 
Showing us that. some love. We got a pretty packed crowd this evening as well, which is to be expected with UConn only having one loss on the year. Very much so. I mean, even not only that, we got a we got a full jungle squad here for the first home district game that we have had. So, you know, it's great to see that. You know, we have a just a lot going on so far. The sun's out. Weather's great. We got fans out here. I mean, juniors, I feel bad for them. They got they got ACT testing tomorrow. Best of luck to all of you guys that have to do that and still go out here and play some soccer. So shout out to y'all. Yours tomorrow as well? Oh, no, I'm a senior. <laughs> oh, that's right. Duh. Yeah. I knew that. I apologize. Well, no, I say that like in spot. I like just like kind of like make poking fun at the juniors. That well, what did up. you get, a 36 on that? Oh, no, dude, I'm not smart. I have like a <laughs> – <laughs> JoJo, you don't need to admit that, buddy. Well, <laughs> well, I am, I have like, I'm like a 3-2, three, 3-3 three, three GP. I, I'm smart, but they like – my ACT score wasn't too crazy compared to, like, yeah, just some. A, just a 35 for you bit listeners and viewers <laughs> <Yeah>. out there. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in the booth relates with me for that one, I will say. But Tigers have possession. 34 minutes left until half. I, one shot on goal for Broken Arrow. And besides that, it's been pretty much all Broken Arrow in this early start of this contest. A million percent. You would think that the Tigers right now with um, Bianca Lopez being out, that it would play a huge factor on, the, on that center back area, kind of like being weak defensively, but hasn't really shown to be much of a difference so far. It kind of just shows how, how well coached we are by Cassie and this team to where we can have somebody on the bench step up and fill in that spot. So it's, you just love to see things like that for the Tigers. It just shows how bright the future is considering that Lopez is somebody who will be going to UCO next year to play soccer. So then that's, that's a senior big piece of the team. So we, it, we love to see that and hopefully that this can actually turn out into a game to where they kind of prove themselves for that spot for the following year or even who knows, maybe even this year. That one squeaked out, so the Tigers will throw it in here. Henfrey with the throw-in. Taking time with the throw. She's going to get it to Castleberry and Kanji. Kind of a miscommunication between the two. Yeah, that was a miscommunication there, absolutely. So UConn maintains possession. But it feels like UConn, although they've been on this side a lot, the Tigers have done a great job making sure they don't get anywhere near the box. For any of some time. This one's a shot on goal attempt. Tigers. Scoot it out, though. Good clear by Dodd, but Martin kind of passes that one backwards to Castleberry, and she's going to give it forward. But You know, Castleberry has just grown through the games that we have called this year and has really been an asset on defense for Broken Arrow. 100%. Tori Hansen, Tori Hansen getting ready to check in, but Castleberry, a junior, and she, she got some minutes last year on the Tigers team, had some goals, so she's just definitely a big piece of this team, but also on that offensive and defensive end, she has been a huge asset towards this team and probably a potential captain later on. Throw in for the Miller. So we're eight minutes in and not much offensive action going on so far than that Tiger shot on goal and that's great defense by Martin right there stealing that ball but we're going to give it right back it's going to stay ball with the Millers good job by Evan Shaw applying pressure though right there to make sure she didn't have any opportunity to pass that one out of it or get a potential open teammate later on I think it's also the spacing that Broken Arrow's had so far in this game. They've been able to spread out their defense at the edge, and that, that's been a difference maker. Is that almost was a handball touch by Kay Jefferson there, but she was able to pick up her feet. That one's going to go off the mark, but the spacing has been the difference maker. That's uh, the first shot on goal by UConn, but just keeping it spread out has been a difference maker. Yeah, they're going to sub out Leah Condry for Tori Hansen, a.k.a. Tojo, as she is now in the game. But, you know, Dan, I think it's very generous to say that was a shot on goal. I wouldn't even say that was on goal. But, you know, that's just me being a biased Tiger fan. And I'll give it to UConn <laughs> there. They are, they deserve it. They are 9-1 and one on the year. Very much true. 9-2 and two after this one, hopefully. But ah, we'll have to see. I like what you did there, JoJo. <laughs> I, that's why I'm BA's number one fan. Actually, there's the, you know, I'm not trying to flex or anything, but I did get voted as BA's number one fan. So ah, so okay. We'll let you flex. <laughs> not much to flex, but. I, I can flex the TV remote. That's all I got these days. Tigers near midfield. TV remote never leaves. Always there for you. The TV remote is the reason that the viewers are watching <laughs> this right now. So shout out to the TV remote in this moment. UConn has the ball, though. You can check us out on all social media platforms. 
Facebook, YouTube, X, and we got a soccer ball on the field. Okay, now. And they're going to let that play they're through. They're just going to keep okay. playing. But Tiger's doing a good job playing defense right there. That was very – that was random. I don't know where that ball I came from. I think it came from the boys practicing – on the far side in the practice field. Surprised they kept that going, but <coughs> nothing changed the course of the game so far. I, I think Ref was trying to be smart right there. Could you imagine if, like, the UConn – like, I, I feel like if I was a, if I was a UConn um, coach and I saw them call that and it was an opportunity for a, a goal score, I'd probably get really ticked off. So yeah, I think, I probably I think Ref too. just let them play it out. You know, good call by the refs right there. So that's going to be a corner kick for UConn, but hopefully Tigers can just keep – playing the, the dominant defense they have been playing when it comes to corners. Marley Fort with that corner kick for UConn. The Tigers scrape it away. Hawks going to kick that one out, and Castleberry has an insane speed. How about that? There. Great job. She's getting it to Henson, but they're just going to dip, kick that one out with no risk. But Castleberry right there, she she had the 4-4 speed right there to get to that ball and clear it to get it to Henson. If Brooke Berlin was not there. That would have been to the back of the net. Or broken arrow. Yeah, an er another early sub, subbing out Jillian Hawk for Peyton Phillips in that center mid defensive mid position. As Heffer's going to throw this one in, get it to Castleberry. That's going to be back to the Tigers. <coughs> throw in for the Tigers. Our other 6A scores, everything remains scoreless right now, but we will keep you up to date on contests throughout the area. It's Evan Shaw over there. She's going to keep control. Look for another teammate getting it to Phillips. Tigers, they have enough space. I mean, it feels like they're they're doing a really good job separating from the UConn players, kind of finding those open spaces to get the ball to, to create something. But it seems whenever we get to the creating part, it's kind of where we kind of like clumber and don't get – don't get to do what we ha we should be doing. So hopefully that can change later on, and Tigers can get get some opportunities to get that ball in the net. UConn working the outside edge. They've got opportunity right here. It is Gonzalez. And another, and another ball. ball on the field. That is number two. You know, I'll give you a hint, boys that are practicing over there. Go to the far side. You won't have this problem. That was great. Great. They should listen to Dan Hawk. <laughs> if only they could hear us, they should be tuned in. It's going to be easy, safe for Hammond right there. Well, I understand that they're trying to warm up, and, and I respect respect that, but you got to keep your the ball away from the pitch right now. It, it reminds me of, you remember the AFC Championship game whenever um, you saw, like, the clips of Travis Kelsey practicing on, like, the side of, you know, he was, like, yes. with Justin Tucker. That's what it reminds me of. Stolen away by Fort. And they've got him. She tries Shaw, to send that one goes it in past Shaw. To Alex Kanetch, but beautiful Tigers underrated defensive back. play right there by Evan Shaw. She kind of just had an easy kick around, getting that away from the UConn player, stealing that, and just like it was so effortless, and just she did that so easily. And Castleberry, she's got the speed, but she's gonna lose it. Great defense. Great. Still uh, comes back up with a JoJo. She's got it. She can cross this one. That's going to go straight into the hands man, of that Rayleigh. That was pretty, pretty right there from Castleberry. Pretty, pretty. I'm quoting that one, Dan. That, that was very, very much that. But Castleberry just showing off her speed, it feels like, right there. So we're down to 26 minutes. <laughs> kind of been all Tigers. And Castleberry once man. again just – Gets back up on her feet. How about that, JoJo? Oh, and Tori Henson wasn't looking in that moment, but great great idea right there by Castleberry to pass that one. And she's just playing like a dog out there, dude. She's got the bark and everything. Got back on her feet and got that ball up there. But now, Fort. UConn's got an opportunity. Good cross. That one's going to go out of bounds. Fort was trying to sneak it in to Rieger, but Tigers capitalized on some good defensive effort. Yeah, good good no call by the ref right there. I feel like in those moments it's pretty easy to give the call towards them, but kind of just saw that she didn't really get slit tackle or anything. I mean, she kind of like looked back at the ref, but no call right there, let him play. So good good idea right there by the ref. And Castleberry gets another steal. Man, I think that's her third steal so far. 
If only st I, mean, I don't even know if Steele is actually a stat in soccer, but if it was, she but would probably would, be, the, yeah, she would be the leader. Now. Yeah. She's been playing, like you said, a dog out on the field right now. Great defense right there by Anderson, but that's going to be ball Tigers to the Tigers. A potential substitution. Landry Turner going to be checking in in just a moment, and she does now. Seems that her and Castleberry's got the the matching cleats, so hopefully we can see some of that that one-two action between the two, and that'll be subbing out for Nicole Martin on that right winger side. So hopefully we got that um that left winger right winger connection between um Castleberry and Turner as they both have the same cleats. That one stays out of bounds on the throw in. So Trindle. Alexis Trindle flips it up to Rieger, and Rieger throws it in. She's trying to cross it, but kind of got that on the upward part of her foot, so did not go where she wanted it to, and that'll be ball to the Tigers. Feels like that um, that mid area for UConn has not really been hitting as much. I feel like their offensive attack has been good, the defense attack has been good, but that center mid defensive mid area has kind of been where they've been lacking this game so far. So Tigers have taken advantage of that through our give and goes, our ball, our passings, everything. So hopefully we can just kind of key that weakness and keep using it to our to our side. That's going to be a steal for Phillips using her body to get that one out of there. 23 minutes. Back. Man, this game is just flying by right now for Broken Arrow. Sure seems like that's a steal right there. We've seen no whistles by the referees so far as well. Yeah, they're letting them play, and I respect that. I love that out of soccer scene, a cl clean match, fair match, no flopping, no crazy calls, but she's shot a little, little too high up right there by uh, Alex Rieger, and Hammond didn't have to put much of effort jumping or anything, kind of just went way too above the net, so... But I think that was their first pretty solid shot, I would say, that they got towards net. We got another sub for Broken Arrow. Leah Condry coming back in. And Madison Castleberry taking a breather. Yeah, she's going to need some rest. That's going to be a big piece that we're going to have to need and use later on in this game, considering how it's been going on so far. It's going to be a cross going to Condry. And she's got Dodd, but... Great defense right there. By Still Alexis the ball. Trindle. How about that? And good Dodd has good it. feet work or footwork rather for Broken Arrow. Good moves by Dodd right there to get that to Hanson, but ends up getting it stealed by Yukon and now Anderson has it. Good job using her body, boxing out, but and we're gonna keep control of that one. Hanfrey's got it to Conjury. Tigers, try, Tigers trying to get it outside of the corner, and now they're back in the middle. Henson with a good idea, getting it back to Phillips. And Phillips kind of gives it a little bit too forward to get it back to UConn. And it seems through the games going on in the state, we have a goal from Jinx as they are playing Bartlesville at their home turf of Jinx. So that's 1-0 for the Jinx game. And that's the only goal that we have right now going on in 6A girls soccer currently. It's going to go out of bounds. I think they're oh, nope, nope, staying stays, in. Stays in from our, from our know, angle. It yeah. looked like it was going out yeah, of bounds. Our, our for POV a is a little bit on the opposite side of that, so it's kind of hard to see. Hammond will send it back out. Oh, that's a good opportunity right there for UConn, but Phillips does a great job closing in that gap and make sure that there's no space whatsoever for UConn to get an opportunity. And that's going to be the first whistle blown that we see. I don't know if it was a handball or I don't know what it was, but that's going to be an opportunity for a free kick for UConn. Yeah, the first one of the night. And it's already down to 21 minutes, so. So Marley Fort will take this penalty kick here. So the wall of defense will hopefully stand for Broken Arrow. You see her passing it off here, Jojo, or do you see her trying to put this one in the back of the net? I think the way that Ford's been playing, I think she's going to take this shot, and she has the opportunity. She has a good, a good leg. She can't get this one in the net. So Tigers got to do a good job making sure that doesn't get past them. Fort, a low kick, and Hammond just falls on it on the dive. 
too easy for him. It kind of just kind of just that that um opportunity, that shot opportunity, just kind of kept the, gave her opportunity to stay active. So far, hasn't really had much opportunities to get her hands or feet moving. So great job right there, just getting down, easily save, and Tigers have momentum. That was the most action in this game Hammond has had to deal with so far. 100%. Defense has done such a great job. You won't even notice that we have a collegiate level player like out of this game. So great job by them just filling in that gap easily. And that one's going to go in the backfield to Shaw. That's going to be goal kick to the Tigers. Yeah. And I will expect her to just pass that off. I don't see her just booting this down the field. Yeah, she's uh maybe, but I don't know. I actually wouldn't know, but that's going to be a sub out right there. Lily Frey is coming in for Alexis Morales. So stands in it. Fans are going to start clapping that one up. Hard to believe we're already under 20 minutes, and you say one shot on goal by uh, UConn. I say that other one was a shot. So I say two for UConn and at least one for Broken Arrow. We'll, we'll, we'll give them two just for the benefit of the doubt right there. That's going to be two for UConn. And, you know, going back to that, you, you bring up a great, great point. It feels like ever since that, that first shot attempt, the Tigers have been, like, not really visible this whole, this whole like, past few minutes offensively, not really getting any opportunities to get to that net. So hopefully – that can change or it can create some opportunities. That one's going to go out of bounds. I believe it was last touched by UConn. Nope. Called a foul there. I think it might have been tripping, but. Whatever it was, they got possession. It's, yeah, they getting, did. it's getting pretty windy now, too. A lot more wind coming, sun's coming down, so. That's Fort. And a kick. Rieger in the middle. And she's just That's getting by everybody, but good steal right there by Shaw. The sun is finally starting to come down too, JoJo. It is, and it's going to start getting cold, and I did not bring a jacket nor a coat. So best of luck to me. But just like you're commentating, you're fire, you'll stay warm. Oh, oh Dan, quote that one immediately. Is he Eminem or what? <laughs> That was great right there. JoJo, I'm like on a roll tonight with butter. So, <laughs> Oh, number two. Don't give me number three. I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> okay, we're not going to get number three. <laughs> I don't have it. Man, that, was, that was great right there. Oh, my. Great, great, great job using her feet right there. Steal. By Rieger, and she's got opportunity to get a goal. Oh, my goodness. She is just Tigers being don't really play some aggressive. Tough defense, though. But Anderson just staying strong, not falling, letting her bully her, and she's going to the ground. It's a shot right there. And, Easy save for Hammond. And Rieger wanted a whistle blown after she fell to the turf. At, I don't know, JoJo. I, I mean, she clearly could have got the call, but I, I think it was just a lot of. Goodness. You know, going against the defender there. She she did additional yapping with that one. <laughs> she, like, five, ten extra seconds of just complaining. Like, goodness. Fort. It's going to be a good job by Anderson just closing that gap and not letting Fort get any opportunity to score. And Anderson has been been a secret, a hidden gem so far defensively. You know, a lot of times it's her and Lopez, but with her being out here, she's kind of being she's been the star of the show so far, not letting anything get past her defensively, so. And we're going to sub out um, Tori Hansen for Addison Castleberry. Get some fresh legs out there. And Castleberry hopefully can continue playing the way she was playing earlier on. Still no score in the baseball game with Broken Arrow and Enid. Did that start at 6 or 6.30? They started at 6. Okay. One other, couple other scores to report for you. Bishop McGinnis is leading Edmond Santa Fe in girls soccer 2-0. And Edmund Memorial is over Piedmont, one nothing. Yeah, they've got some goal scoring going on over there, so hopefully that can correlate it to this game as Anderson's going to get in front of that one. That looked like a handball That did look me. like a handball. Clearly could wow. tell. I think refs are out of position, and that one's going to go out of bounds, and it was going to go against no, Henfrey. No, no. It's going to be a quick throw, and she's trying to get out there and get ready. Ford again. Trying to send one in to Hammond, and Hammond diving saves it. So 15.35 to go here in the first. 
And we're still scoreless. I hate to say it, but Dan, I did see a third ball come through. It did not. It hit our our side of the net, so it didn't go through the through our field. But you know, that's just very random to see that happening. But just wanted to point that one out in case nobody else saw it. And good job by Martin right there, or Turner actually, keeping control of that one. And that's going to be ball still towards UConn. It's been a 50-50 game so far. You know, it started off kind of towards the Tigers' way, but did. at this point, I feel like it's, it has been very much 50-50. You could even say it's been like a 60-40 towards UConn, the way they have been playing. But so far, Tigers have not um, let down anything defensively so far, but kind of got to pick it up offensively on this side. We see a Ronaldo jersey out there. It is jersey night, like you said. Oh, my goodness, Dan. I'm going to, you know, um, for all the viewers, um, me and Dan, we saw each other at Aspen Creek for a Aspen ah, Creek the color, color run. run. And that story will be coming out on Aerovision rather shortly. So a little plug to that. But um, um, the reason I bring that up is, you know, as, as whenever I was a, uh, an elementary kid, middle school kid, um, we enjoyed, you know, we, we enjoyed Pokemon cards. We, we did the dab a lot. You know, we had a lot of things. The one thing that the kids love more than anything is Cristiano Ronaldo. And every time I would walk past a kid, they would say, do the Ronaldo celebration. You know, it's the Ronaldo celebration. I'm not going to do it because there's no camera on me. But it, like, runs. And, like, there's, like, a sweet, you know. And they just kept begging me to do it. I was like, man, these kids are, like, cultured towards sports nowadays, it feels like. So, I shout like out Christian and Ronaldo. Yeah, but we checking that color run story. A lot of fun with the kiddos. I left there looking like a giant rainbow with all the chalk that was all over me. See, Dan thinks he was like that. I was out there running, I think we ran 12 or 13 Thir miles that whole time with, with all of them, all grades, kindergarten through fifth grade. So it was a great time. And I did not, so you can blame me on that <laughs> one. Great job by Turner right there. She's going to get that one to Martin. And the Tigers have a huge opportunity here. Good cross right there, but that's going to go straight Just to Just a little too much leg. To Rayleigh. As Rayleigh's had a pretty good opportunity staying active in that goal. And that one did hit a Tiger player's arm, but they're not going to call it. Phillips has it. Good cross right there, but Hanfrey staying there, not letting any space in between her and the defender, and that's just a great job right there by Hanfrey. But they're going back and forth, throwing some shoulders, throwing some hips, everything. But UConn keeps control. It's a good shot. Reagan with a nice blast. But Hammond there, just like a catcher, gobbles it up. Great job right there, Meyer. Just st staying, in her, staying in that area. Don't need to move anywhere else too crazy. Just grab it, dive on it. Easy save for her. But once again, Rager has an opportunity to get a goal. And she's just been like that that girl over there. And it's just a lot of, a lot of falling. But refs are not calling it. So... I love to see that, but now they're going to call that one. That one stays in, in, in the uh, play field. So Rieger, I think that's Rieger going to take that shot. No, I stand. I think that's either Rieger or Fort who's going to be the, t the one taking the free kick. I think it's Fort. Yeah, it looks like Fort for UConn. Yeah, 11.45 to go here in the first. Time is taking by very fast. I mean, the way this is playing, I could see this going into PK. So That one is off the mark, so we'll remain scoreless. Yeah, great shot by Fort, but a little too high up on that right post. Didn't get it in there, luckily. So it's going to be goal kick for the Tigers as we inch towards 10 minutes to go in this intense matchup between UConn and Broken Arrow. As Condry has it, she's going to look for a teammate. But just playing it patiently, she's going to get it to Castleberry. Castleberry can make something shake. Jinx is now leading Bartlesville 2 nothing in the first. Back-to-back -back state champs, she's going to do it to you. That's going to be go ball out of to the Tigers. Yep, it'll stay with Broken Arrow, and Hemphrey will throw it in. They're going to tow it in. Move back a little bit. She kind of, she kind of. She like was trying inched. to move she it up. a little bit. She's like, hey, maybe little. the referees didn't see this. I'm going to scoot up a little bit. Yeah, but refs are going to stay neutral about it. Got to give her props over trying. 
And you're just going to boot that one back to the goalie. Yes, they should. And they do. Hammond's going to look for another open teammate. Guess that went to the middle to Phillips. Tigers have the right idea here. It's going to make something happen. Yeah, nice but ball they, movement. But they lose it immediately. But and get, get it, it right, right back. back. Wow. It's the story of soccer. That pass is just off the mark to Castleberry. If they would have stretched that a little bit, she would have had an open look to the net. 100%. Shaw's got it. She's going to give that one to Turner. Turner cross. I thought that hit a hand, but I can't really see it from here. And Tigers still have it. It feels like it's been on our side a lot. A shot right there. It's going to go straight into the hands of the goalie. She's going to lay on it. Good shot by Shaw right there. Kind of unexpected here. See you come out at that defensive position to go out there take a shot. Try to catch the goalie off guard, but ended up being easy save for Rayleigh. As Claire Finley and Nicole Martin are waiting to get checked in to come into this game. Good defense right there by Castleberry. And good no call by the referee letting him play it out. Yeah, I mean, that was all ball. Like, I know that the UConn uh, Trendle took a nasty fall to the turf, but that was not intentional at all. That was all fighting for the ball. 100%. That's a great cross right there by Anderson getting it to Conjury. Conjury, and she's got an opportunity to either cross this one or take it herself. She's just going to take her time and look for an open teammate. Smart. Playing it very smart. She's got a give and go right here, and this can be a cross. Keeps it in. Still with, nope, lost the ball at the very end. Ends up losing it, but Knowing how Castleberry has been playing defensively, we can get that ball right back as we do as Phillips got it. It's going to be a shot right there. but It's going to go off the mark. A little bit of a clustered shot by Martin right there going a little bit too far of the right. So it's going to stay possession towards UConn. They're going to kick this one in. But Tiger's going to get some fresh legs out there, subbing out Brooke Dodd and Addison Castleberry for Claire Finley and Nicole Martin, as well as Alexis Morales for Leah Condry as we get towards less than eight minutes to go in this game. Good job of Morales using her body getting there. That's a good cross as Morales, is, she can do something here. Crosses it, almost, really close opportunity as Landry Turner had a great look right there, but just couldn't get it into the net. And Shaw's going to throw this one in immediately, getting it to Finley. And Shaw can cross this one. Two teammates running to each other. But Tigers, I mean, it feels like in these past five minutes, it's been all Tiger yeah, ball. Yeah, it has been, JoJo. But that's going to be... Phillips took some, some sort of a shot, it feels like, and easy save by Rayleigh right there. So it's right into her hands. In a game like this, I think if any chance you can get a shot on goal, you got to take it, even if it's not the best look, because you really don't want to go to penalty kicks with UConn. 100%. But, I mean, also at the same time, I mean, it's always better to, to just end a game off of a, a goal instead of going into PK. But, we, we are experienced in PKs as we did come back from a 1-0 win in playing PKs against um, Norman North. So a lot of upside if the Tigers do go into it. I don't know if UConn has. So in that sense, we would have an advantage. But. So Tigers with a throw in here. It's going to stay towards UConn. Throw in for the Millers. So the Millers will throw in it in. Every time I hear Millers, I think of that movie, We Are the Millers. So, You know, I want to say I relate with you on that one, but I don't know what that is. Yeah, so. I figured you did. Yeah. Can't lie to the viewers. Jason Sudeikis was in the film, if I'm not mistaken. Who later became Ted Lasso. Oh, that's a name I know. <laughs> Ted Lasso. A made-up character. That's the one you know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best, JoJo. As we see a kick from Coach Cassie herself getting that one to the Tigers. Goes to show that the coaches do have it when it comes to playing their sport. 
Five and a half minutes to go here in the first. Turner's going to get that one. That's going to be given back to UConn. Now it's kind of towards UConn's side as they've been playing great. But that's going to be a steal for Turner. Good moves right there by Martin. She can make something happen right here, getting it to one of her teammates in Finley. And Tigers are just breaking ankles here, there, and everywhere. Shout out, Dr. Seuss. But Morales has that one. She's going to turn, take a shot. Just off the mark. Good look right there by Morales, but a little bit to the left. And Tigers getting more shots on goal as they're ending towards the end of this half. So we love to see that when it comes to pushing towards us and getting some getting some stuff going offensively. As UConn Millers are going to sub out. They're going to sub out Haley Solis to get in a, another UConn player. 4.29 to go. In the first. Nice boot by their goalie, but taken away by Broken Arrow. Morales, she can get something happening right here. Good cross. Good header right there, though, by Brooke, by Brooke Berland. And she just jumped out of nowhere. That's, that is one thing I will say, speaking on the jumping part. This UConn team has some height. Yes, they do. They they are all taller than me. I and mean, it's not saying much, but in the sense of they, they have some tall athletes out there that, that not only are tall but are also really mobile and fast. So that's really good to have on the defensive end and also on the offensive end when it comes to headers and things of that nature. What are you, JoJo 6'3"? <laughs> we'll go with that. They can't really see my height. But if you, if you know me, you know I'm not 6'3". But it's okay. Good cross to Martin. She's going to get that one to Martin. Morales. Morales trying to get something to go, and she gets pushed. But Turner's got it. Going to cross that one, and a lot going on right now. As the goalie's down on the ground, but they're going to clear that one out, and UConn's just going to play it, play it safe. And throw in for the Tigers. So throw in for Broken Arrow. Wind has picked up some more. Yeah, that was a great, good opportunity for the Tigers to hopefully had had gotten something, but we ended up not. But ooh, you know, I, I know that shot was off the mark there, but that was the perfect placement for it. Oh, a million! You had percent. a great look. You had the time to boot it. It just went above the net. Everything was perfect right there from the from the beginning of the throw in to the execution of it, but just a little bit higher. But things like that, I mean, kind of just getting in the goalie's head is where you can create something, create some havoc later on in this game. I believe you, that was Nicole Martin. I think it was either Martin or Shaw, so shout out to either or whoever it was that did that. But seeing that the Tigers are getting, getting possession kind of back on their side. Throw in for the Millers. With almost less than two minutes to go, Tigers just got to make sure to not make anything bad happen with these last two minutes and hopefully potentially get a goal in. Bixby leading Sand Springs 5 nothing in the first. They scored they scored five goals in a snap immediately. So hopefully Tigers can correlate that to us. I would love to see some goals scored. But two minutes to go now. Shaw's got it. She's just gonna boot that one out. To Turner, who does a great job using her body to, to turn around and get the ball. And, and that's going to be the first call that goes towards the Tigers by the referee as yes, they're going to call that one on UConn for grabbing Turner. So Tigers have an opportunity to either clear this one deep and get it towards a teammate or just play it short and sweet and get it to a teammate on this short left or right side. We're going to take the deep shot. It's Martin has it. Going to get it to Turner. Tigers are staying, staying, staying woke defensively, not letting anything get past them. As we get towards less than a minute to go, I say you got to go attack with this final minute here. Hundred percent, let it go just, after it. Put all the effort on it, the best that you can. Good, good um, cross right there by Morales, getting it to Turner. And it'd be beautiful to see a goal right here. It's just going to be a cross. Could have been a known goal right there, but still have a chance. 
Going to have to get the ball back, and they do. Shaw's got it. Shaw is quickly moving up. But loses it. In that and, game. yeah, UConn just boots it out of bounds. I mean, almost 20 seconds to go. I, I think UConn did the right thing there. They knew that it was not in their opportunity there to slow them down. But so Broken Arrow will get a throw in, <laughs> and they'll have to work with 10 seconds. Five right. seconds I left. That's going to do the first half of play. So we're scoreless here at Kirkland. JoJo David along is my color analyst. Dan Hawk will have the second half coming up in just a little bit. You're watching Tigers Soccer on Aerovision. In 1989, the First National Bank of Broken Arrow established the first Achievement Scholarship Award to help graduating seniors who they or their parents were bank customers to help with the cost of a college education. And since that time, we've paid out more than $300,000 in scholarships to 40 students. I am going to TCC for dental hygiene and in total TCC is quoting about $30,000 for that program so this scholarship will provide me with almost a third of my entire cost for school which is really really generous. It's relieving to know that I won't have to worry about such a huge portion of the education. A scholarship like this will absolutely change my life because being a hygienist you have the liberty of being very flexible with your schedule and so that gives me the opportunity to be a mom and all of that that stuff, but it also just gives me time to stay with, active within the community and maybe do stuff with First National Bank, um, volunteer with Broken Arrow Neighbors or volunteer with charities and stuff like that. It's just having that profession be available to me is just really exciting. The bank provides the scholarship in order to provide financial support to students who face rising costs of a college education. This is just one way that the bank chooses to give back to the community as well as customers and their children who are graduating seniors. This year's Beyond and Above winner, please help me welcome to the stage Maurice Wallace, behavior coach at the Broken Arrow Freshman Academy. Dan Hawk here with Aerovision. I'm here with Beyond and Above winner Maurice Wallace. How was this night for you? I know that it was a whirlwind of a night, hearing everybody finding out where you'd stand, yeah. but what does it mean to you to walk away with this? I just It just means a lot not only to me, but to BAFA. Um, I think uh, there's a, a perception of BAFA out there with a lot of people, and I don't think they understand what we're trying to do for the district, and it starts with BAFA. So I think for me, I think it's, this award means a lot to BAFA, and if we can just continue to put that positive energy out there for BAFA, then we'll, we'll be all right. When I walked through and did the story with you, learning that your smile is contagious, but it's getting across to the kids. Tell me about how important that is as to why you got in the education. Well, every day, one thing I can always say, there's always, we never go through what kids are going through today. Um, what, what kids are going through today, I think that what we have to understand is uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what we're going through, it matters what, what, they're, what they're going through. Um, connecting, engaging with kids every day, impacting kids every day. But I think that um, what thing that we can do as teachers, as educators, as support staff, is just to make sure that we, we walk in with a smile on our face every day because that kid needs that smile. These kids today are going through a lot more than what we went through as kids, and I think if I do that and, and love every day and love to come to work every day, it, it's, it's a positive for the kids. The lesson that I learned tonight is it's more than just a teacher. It's yeah. more than the secondary individual helping mm -hmm. with a student. Tell me about what that means to you to make that impact on a child. Well. Obviously, teachers are teaching my kids. I, I think that if, if, if I have that impact with them, 
then they can take that on to the future. I mean, I've seen, you know, I have Miss Otten in there, who's who I've known since I was in fourth grade. Miss Green, who's as, who's an assistant principal, she's my science teacher when I was in sixth grade. Obviously, Mr. Rice, who's our principal, uh, Miss Silva, Miss Officer, who hired me. I think those are the key, those those people right there. As long as we as long as we have those type of people impacting those type of kids every day, they'll be able to come back and do the things that we're doing, not only as teachers, but but as support staff. But what does this honor mean to you oh, this evening? This is the top. Uh, I don't think I think a lot of people understand. If, if you know me from whenever I was younger, I think this is where this is where it's at right here. I mean, football is football. Uh, winning winning championships is winning championships. But being recognized in the academic world is is is, uh, is major. We always say in our locker room and the coach's office that we're, we're teachers first before we're coaches. When it comes to training, it's all about pushing boundaries and embracing different styles to elevate your performance. After graduating from Broken Arrow High School, Joshua Farquaad decided to take his wrestling skills abroad, heading to Georgia, just south of Turkey. Little did he know how much this experience would shape his journey back to Broken Arrow. I've gotten to train with them the past couple months and I've progressed a lot. So having them come here, be in my home, and kind of get to see where I was wrestling, uh, it just makes me happy. Just as wrestlers strive to reach their peak, that same dedication is evident in the final details of Broken Arrow High School's new wrestling facility. This week has been truly exceptional, with wrestlers from across the globe joining in the excitement. We're hosting a training camp with the Georgia national team. Uh, they're going to wrestle in the Journeyman International Wrestling Tournament in Albany, New York later this week. And uh, they had the opportunity to come train here uh, for the opener of this new facility. Uh, it's just special, you know, not a lot of people get this opportunity, I don't feel like. And so to be able to learn from some of the best in the uh, world is really special. Many miles separate the country of Georgia and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. The Georgia national team made a pit stop here at Broken Arrow High School to check out the new facilities and showcase their style of wrestling. Freestyle in America is getting more and more popular. So when we teach our stuff, it's pretty proud for us. And having them come and teach and uh, show us some of, I mean, what they work in matches, um, it helps the Broken Arrow wrestling community kind of move forward in a good direction, I think. Beyond training, the Georgia national team really got a taste of Oklahoma life, checking out the Wrestling Hall of Fame in Stillwater and diving into what makes this state so unique. For us, this is a good experience, and for you also, I see we are happy and you are happy, and guys, girls everywhere, and we change our for things, our techniques, our many, many things. This, this is so, so nice. We're trying to give them, I mean, like a good American experience. For a lot of them, it's their first time in the U.S. I think only two of them have actually been here. When it comes to wrestling, everyone's got their own moves and techniques. But what never changes is the love for the sport and the intense competition that drives us all. Not only do we want to have the best facilities, we want to create the best relationships for our wrestlers to improve, and this is just the first step. We trained, we had a lot of fun, and I, I think I'll come back once again. Yeah, I, I really like here, being here. A new facility, new memories, and the love of wrestling, all set to be pinned down for an exciting future. The timing of it coming together, uh, with the Georgian uh, wrestlers coming in town and this facility being available is just basically the tip of the iceberg of the things that we want to do and continue to do. Now just knowing that this like side of the whole facility is ours, it's so wonderful. The future holds endless possibilities. At Broken Arrow High School with AeroVision, I'm Dan Hawk.
Tulsa Bone and Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone and Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Casha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone and Joint, moving life forward. And welcome back to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. It is deadlocked at zero apiece. Both teams not given much advantage to either one of them to get to the back of the net, but we'll have a second half coming up in just a moment. Other scores from around the area. Bishop McGinnis on top of Edmond Santa Fe, 2-0. Jinx on top of Bartlesville, 2-0. They're still in the first half. Edmond Santa Fe is at half. Bixby leading Sand Springs in the first half, 5-0. And Edmond Memorial on top of Piedmont, 2 Nothing for our other scores. I gotta check in with my color analyst, Jojo David, because you got some updates on our other Broken Arrow teams. Yeah, we was talking um scores, so we're gonna talk about some softball and baseball going around the Broken Arrow area. So softball game one, we had BA take down Bixby with a score of 13 to two, and then game two, BA 13, Bixby to 10, and that is um going on over there with softball and then baseball we have baseball up 1-0 on Enid top of the third so shout out to our baseball guys all my peeps down there shout out to y'all even though you're probably not going to watch this because you are out there swinging the bat yeah but they are looking for the sweep of Enid and just want to give a big shout out to coach King for the softball program with those two wins today they are now they're undefeated 17 and 0 and we'll be having him on an upcoming Uncaged podcast, and I believe 14 of those 17, I, I might have that number wrong, over 10 for sure have been run rules. 100%. And they have, slow, they have been pitch softball. They so. have been dominating. Um, yeah, so we, uh, half the girl, or more than half the girls are batting over 500. Uh, it's been very impressive what he's been able to do. And, uh, you know, I know that kind of gets him geared up for the fast pitch season in the fall. Not, not taking away from slow pitch, but obviously there's only a handful of states that do slow pitch, but that, that they're primed for a, a potential run for a state title in slow pitch. Yeah, we were actually on a call at a slow pitch game. I hope we could call some baseball together hopefully soon in the upcoming future. But um, going over to softball, um, I was lucky enough with some of the Jungle Squad members and some students from Student Council in Advance, we took a little mini bus to the softball fast pitch state first round game, and I have never seen an environment so cool Ever. I, I didn't think it was going to be too crazy, but it was the, one of the coolest events I've ever seen at a sporting event. Um, and we hope to hopefully take another bus as they go to Slow Pitch State. Yeah, hopefully so. So we'll start the second half here with UConn and Broken Arrow. And UConn will go the opposite direction now, as BA will go the opposite direction. And we'll try to get to the back of the net for Broken Arrow. Yep. 40. A win today, JoJo would give Broken Arrow their eighth win of the year and their third win in conference. And that conference win, to me, is a lot more important than the overall win just because of the fact that UConn is 3-0 and in districts, which means that Broken Arrow would hold that tiebreaker. Yeah, and, I, and one thing I do want to point out that I have just seen, we apparently we have a sub out, a goalie. Um, we have taken out um, Jalen Hammond and putting in Haley Allen. And she does have experience out there on the field, a really, really um, good quality goalie to have on this Tigers team. So she's kind of, kind of going to be out there. And, you know, it's just, it's just something to point out that I haven't seen from the Tigers with the goalie switch up, but not much of a change. Just we have two really good goalkeepers at the, at the goal for the Tigers. Yeah, Allen has been a force in the back of the net for the Tigers this year. Much different style of play in the back of the net than Hammond. I think she has a little bit more quickness. Oh, 100%. There, no, no two goalies are always the same. There's always a difference. I mean, we can talk about even on the boys' team. We have um, Cairo Prey and Evan Boss. You know, Evan Boss is more of a, a quicker athletic type, and, you know, we have um, Cairo Prey, who's more of a, of a long reach, wider build, who can get those uh, up at the top. So no goalie is always going to be in the same in sports. There's always going to be differences, but it's really good to see whenever a team has two good quality goalies that they can put in the net. Sap cut fell to the turf on Nicole Martin. You know, I normally don't say this, but that was a flop all day. Yeah, LeBron James style right there. I didn't or really Manu see it. Or Manu Ginobili, I think. Ah. 
That's a good pull right there. I was a, I did not like the Spurs. Yeah, I think, like, How was dare bad. you? No, I'm kidding. I'm when it, like growing, because that's whenever like my era of like like whenever I started like watching watching basketball, and the Heat, the the Spurs were just such a boring team to watch. But they were <laughs> they were they were so good, but so boring. And like all of them, like like Tony Parker, Monte Ginobili, and Tim yes. Duncan. Yeah, but they were just so dominant. Now I res I respect their game watching it, but at least you have a team. My team does not exist anymore. So yeah. well, well, it does. OKC Thunder. It's not my team, JoJo. <laughs> you know I'm a. I was a Sonics fan. Yeah, so you're a OKC and Thunder. And Sasquatch is still homeless. That's all I gotta add. You're, you're a OKC Thunder. The best fan, mascot so. ever in all of sports, Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the Thunder. No, I don't have the thunder. Uh, <laughs> come on, I, I, I. That's a Greg Spencer thing there for you. Our yeah. director of Aerovision is the thunder, not Dan Hawk. Yeah, I was born a Thunder fan, but I grew into the Westbrook role. So I've, I've been a journeyman alongside my king, and Russell Greg Westbrook. So I was a, a Wizards fan for two years. Um, I was a Lakers fan. That was probably the worst time of my life. Being so basically, fan. folks, JoJo was just a front runner who has whoever was good on the pitch. No, no, wh whoever court. whoever has Westbrook is the team. Oh, I, okay, okay. That was like the okay. team that I, yeah, I just love him. He's probably like my favorite athlete of all time. I have a shirt that says this guy loves Russell Westbrook and has like thumbs pointing <laughs> towards me. So <laughs> That's pretty good, JoJo. I'll wear it one day. Show it off. But back to the pitch, 36 minutes left in the contest and I said this at the beginning I really don't want to go to penalty kicks Tigers are gonna need to find a way here in this second half to just get one in the back of the net Dan what's the hate on PKs man nothing I just when you got a team that has nine wins on the year I don't think you want to face them in penalty kicks. Uh, I mean, we did talk about their um, their goal scoring percentages I think they are leading the state you said earlier right. so that is a scary sight to see yes but if we're talking I mean I don't know. As a soccer fan, I, I just admire PKs. Oh, I you know? do too. But I just think on a game like this, you do not want to face them. And you were bringing that up. They average 6.7 goals a game. Yeah, they are they are a great team. But I don't know if they have competed in a PK yet. I know the Tigers just got back from winning a PK match. So right. we might have that on them. I don't know if they did or not. Yeah, but that, that PK match came up with Norman North. That was in overtime. Second round of PKs. They were also playing Brilliant. with a girl Brilliant. down as well in the contest. Yeah, I was um, – the, uh, the Norman North, that is. The Norman North game, um, Jalen Hammond earlier, the goalie, um, she was showing me a video of her in the game, and she just, like, completely got, like, folded. I don't know what happened, like a chair. And, and it was a play. I think she got hurt. I don't know what it was that had happened, but I was like, dang, and she's still – I don't know if she – oh, good good cross right there by Finley. Get it to Conjury, but – That's going to go out of bounds. Brooke Berlin just sends it out. Good ball movement by the Tigers, and they just lost it right at the end. Yeah, good vision right there by Finley getting that one out to Conjure because she does have the speed to reach it, but a little bit too much on it. So that one's going to go potentially out. They're going to keep it in. And Frey's putting some pressure on Riga right there, but it's going to go right back to the Tigers. So Anderson's got it, putting some moves on there, showing off. It's all these fans in the stands. The wind slowly dying down a little bit. Has died down. You know, if during halftime I was out there completing some quests. I saw some of my Jungle Squad guys. We were out there on the field kicking the ball around. And, you know, the wind has died down from what it was at the very beginning. But Yeah, we saw you at halftime. Next time we'll get a camera for our halftime show. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Speaking of it, Dan, we um, some of us we have an idea of what you could do for a Dan Dust stuff. Oh, what do we got, Joe? Um, like the day at literally the day after school ends, we have our Jungle Squad tryouts, and it consists of a lot of flag. It's 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 running. We do we do a lot of flag running. So you want me to try out for the Jungle Squad? I want you. You could do well, Parker Ryden, our student council president, who was down there. Shout out Parker. Brought a Blackhawk two broke in our high school. Insane. Um, but um, he he texted me. He was like, "We could totally do that." I said, "Of course." So this is my first. I didn't actually text you, even though I should have. But that was. Now I'm thinking about that. That's on this. I'm advertising the idea to you right now. Do a Dan does stuff Jungle Squad tryout. You know, kind of advertising what it is that we do. You know, running out there those flags. It's a lot. I will do it if Blake Shy, our producer and engineer, partakes with me in it. We'll do the Jungle Squad tryout. He's nodding. He's never going to be on mic, folks. I, th I think that means yes. 
You guys can't hear him, but we can. Oh, man, Tigers trying to get one in on a header from Nicole Martin from the corner. Yeah, there was a... Man, that was close. There was a lot of good stuff going on from the corner kick itself to whenever the ball was in the box area, but Tigers just couldn't get it through. Asrady has been playing a, a, a quiet but great game in the goal so far today. That's good defense by Finley getting it to Hawk. And <coughs> Castleberry is going to get in front of there, but they're going to get it right back to Ashland Sharp. And that's a good cross right there. As Marley Ford can do something. But good job by Anderson just closing yeah, that Anderson gap, not letting in, anything get past nowhere. her. I don't think she saw Anderson sneak around her. 100%. I think she was looking right at the net ahead of her and lost Anderson as Martin sends it up. Could be a chance. Nope. Tigers almost had an opportunity there, but that's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, good defense by Trindle right there, getting in front of Castleberry, making sure nothing can happen. But Castleberry just – just the way that she could travel from one side of the field to the other just in, in like an instant, in one snap, is just beautiful to see as she has been continuously doing that. And back to the um, boys' baseball game. As of right now, it is 2-1 for the Tigers on Enid. It is the top of the fourth, so our boys are staying poised in that game right now. 2-1 lead on the, on the Plainsmen, as Dan said earlier, hoping to stay undefeated against the Plainsmen. Yeah, clean sweep of the Plainsmen, which is another district game for the Tigers, which would be huge. After playing on the road last night and spoke with Coach Dobson, the Tigers didn't get home till 11 p.m. last night. I actually did see, you know, it's a little bit of a throwback. I saw um, one of them posted on their stories that they did the mannequin challenge on the bus. They must have been really bored because. The mannequin challenge. Yeah, that was, uh, well, you know about Nick, you know about the mannequin challenge. You'll have to explain this one to me. No way. We're going to have to talk about this off stream. But okay, okay. We're here for soccer, not the mannequin challenge. That's going to be a good good job taking that ball away from Claire Finley. We did the hat game back in the day, but that was our game. Oh, you know what? I, I, you don't know the mannequin challenge. I don't know the hat game, so I, I can see the the way they, the two can con contrast. You also don't know who Jason Sudeikis is either. Jojo. But I do know who Ted Lasso is. <laughs> who is Jason Sudeikis? Dodd's got that one. She's going to shoot it, but. Not too much sauce on that ball, so easy save right there by Rayleigh. So we're down to 30 and a half minutes to go as the Tigers look to sub in. Cameron Majak is going to be coming. Oh, Cameron Magic is what I like to call her as she's coming back from injury. First game in a while, so good to see her out there, but getting ready to get out on the pitch. And that ball's not going on the road, but it's staying in, actually. That somehow came back in wind, potentially. Just defy the laws of gravity right there. Shout out Isaac Newton. And great job right there. But I believe that was, I don't know who that was. I cannot see from here, but great job by her getting in front of that ball, making sure that they don't get an opportunity to get across right there. I can officially retire. JoJo got an Isaac Newton reference in a broadcast. Well, <laughs> If anything's going to stick from learning stuff around that realm, <laughs> it's going to be education, Isaac. Yes. It's, well, no, not just be education, but. As Leah Condry trying to get in something here. Good spin movement. She has a cross. She could have given that one to Finley. I think Finley. she could have went back to Martin. Yeah, that was, that was Finley, actually. but Or Finley, yes. Yeah, she could have went to Finley. Finley was kind of calling for it. I mean, that could have been a really good opportunity. Seems kind of be the first miscue we've seen from Castleberry all day, but she's going to make up for it immediately and get that ball right <laughs> and back. And she's sprinting with some anticipation towards the net. Tigers trying to get one, sneaking one in. A lot going on right now, but. Condry trying to get her second shot in. That was close as it can come so far in this contest. A lot of good stuff going on right now for the Tigers, but. Just can't seem to capitalize it when it comes to getting the ball in the net. But momentum-wise, even if, like I said, if we do go two PKs, it's good to go in with that type of momentum of knowing that it was your game So, if I for most of the game. And Hawk's going to get that one to Condry. But it's going to be a, a turnover right there. It's going to go back to Rieger. And that's an opportunity right there for Jefferson, who's in goal. And that's going to be a goal for Jefferson. She gets it right where it needed to be. 1-0 for UConn, and that one hurts right in the heart of the Tigers. And Jefferson, Jefferson snuck it in the back of the net on Allen. 
Allen Doford tried to give it her best effort. Yeah, she but she Jefferson she, just found a corner and found the back of the net. Yeah, she had the right vision. She stuck her left foot out, but it just went barely right past that one. So went into the net, and that's a goal for the Tigers, but or not for the Tigers, for her for the Millers for UConn, but Cameron Magic is going to be Cameron Majika is going to be out there subbing in for Addison Castleberry. She's coming out, and hopefully Tigers. I mean now momentum that whole that whole um, part of the half was kind of towards them, but now it kind of just in an instant snapped and changed, and now it's towards UConn. So now Tigers going to have to start playing at like like they're behind. So hopefully we can just flip that script soon. Just need one goal to tie this one up. That might be corner. If Ref gives it to us, but I think they're just going to say. Oh, they're going to say goal kick. Should have been a corner. Yeah, some of the some of the fans in the stands are begging for a corner, but Ref, ref had a better view than us, so, you know, I'm going to say neutral on that one. But Jinx Bartlesville, 2 nothing at the half. Deer Creek on top of Moore, 1 nothing. Bixby leading Sand Springs, 5 nothing. They're still in the first. Edmund Memorial 2-0 in the first with Piedmont. Bishop McGinnis at the half on top of Edmund Santa Fe, 2-0. And here at Kirkland, UConn just scored midway through, almost midway through the second with Jefferson, so it is 1-0 UConn. Yeah, good ball skills by Riga right there. That's UConn. Now, like I said, now not even just possession on a possession basis, but just um, momentum basis. They seem to have everything going for them now as Finley's got it. They're going to cross that one to Condry or try to, and that's going to go right into a UConn player's feet. I was going to say hands, but more so feet. Tigers are going to have to work back. Still plenty of time, though. 100%. I mean, any, anything is possible. We, we have seen... Um, you know, I'm going to reference one of the boys' games early on in the season whenever they played. Um, it was us versus Bartlesville. It was really cold outside in, in that game. Oh, ref's going to call that one out on BA, so it's going to be ball towards UConn. But we were um, all out down there. It was really cold, and Tigers were up 2-0 easily with, like I think, 20, 30 minutes to go. And we conceded two goals to make it 2-2. Ended up going into PKs. Tigers still won, but kind of just shows that anything is possible, that we can tie this up and not only tie it up, but also take the win with two goals getting in the net. So anything can happen. It's good defense right there by Henfrey. That's going to stay ball towards UConn. Tigers came in to this evening contest with a 7-2 and two mark, 2-1 two and one in the district. UConn 9-1 undefeated with a 3-0 and oh mark in the district. It's going to be a corner for, for UConn. As we give a shout-out to our one-club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Ascension St. John, Tulsa Bone & Joy, TTCU Federal Credit Union, The Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. We're going to talk about Tiger Threads. You know, Tiger Threads are located now at the northeast corner of the new event center in the south end zone at Tiger Stadium. It is your go-to for all the fan stuff that you need to gear up for any Tiger sporting events, and Broken Arrow Public School staff members get additional discounts. Lucky for you guys, because I don't. Boo-hoo. Open 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. That one's going to go back out of bounds. I will say I um I was driving by um, I think it was yesterday during the whole like solar eclipse stuff, and um, I saw I could I could visibly like see tiger tiger threads driving by on that south side of the stadium. And it was cool to see because you know most of the time it's like and when it that, went dark it went away. Is that what you're gonna say? Well, no, that's not what I was gonna say. <laughs> this is just during like the whole we were we were we were at practice and we were in a rush trying to we went to like 11 different stores trying to get glasses. Corner kick here by UConn. And the ball still still bouncing still around. The Tigers do a great job just getting it out of there. Yeah. As Martin's going to boot it. Martin cleans it away. Go on with Tiger threads. Oh, oh, my story. No, my bad. Um, we were driving by and I could see it like visibly see. It. It's kind of cool to see that because like you know, back then it was in a spot where you couldn't really see it or notice it. It was like in the front of the high school, but now it's like you can visibly see it. And it's not nowadays. It it, it can not only just be open for students and staff. Any any broken arrow tiger 
that wants any gear, they can pop by and go and it's now it's more visibly seen. So Yeah, and there's also a changing room and bathroom as well. So be checking them out. They will have tons of sales coming up as Martin lost it and was tripped in the process. <laughs> Anderson's got that one. Yeah, she she cleans, out Shaw. Now. cleans it out to Shaw, like you said. 23 minutes, 22 seconds left in the contest. Landry Turner getting ready to sub back in. As Dawes got it, now Tigers can do something. But I think we got a Tiger down. Yeah, that was Claire Finley. I think she just lost her footing and twist her ankle a little bit, but she gets back up. She's moving again, so I think everything seems to be okay for Finley. Yeah, good vision right there by Dodd and um, with Jack here trying to get a give and go going on, but it ended up not happening. As Jefferson's got it, but they're just going to give it back to Haley Allen. She's going to look for the open teammate. Just as a reminder, the boys game will follow on Aerovision as they host UConn in this that's, doubleheader. That's a one, a number one in the district versus number two in the district showdown. As a lot of my friends from the soccer team have been giving me comments that about that That was nearly game. a handball. Close, but Martin stays, keeps control Sapcut. of it. Martin's got it, and she can do something right here. Yeah, sap cut for UConn looked like they held on to it. Martin's goal shot nowhere near the back of the net, so UConn will take over. Yeah, and Majika was wide open on that, and she was not offside. She was in a spot where she would have been called present, but Martin did not see it as, Maj as Ma Majika was calling for it. You could see it with their hands, but that would have been a great opportunity for the Tigers, so hopefully we get another two opportunity like that where UConn does not see it, and we have an open shot at goal. And Hawks got it. She's going to get it to Finley. The Tigers can do something here. Finley's slowing the pace down just a little bit. Good cross to Martin. Martin in the corner, keeping it in bounds, but and it's going to go out. out. It's going to be goal kick for UConn. It seems like kind of just kick everything in itself is just shifted towards UConn's side. So we're going to get some subs in to hopefully defect that from happening as, as Martin and Claire Finley are going to come out of the game for Alexis Morales and Landry Turner. Shout out to Martin and Finley putting in that effort. So they're going to get their well-needed rest. Conjury's fighting to keep that one in as she does. Crosses it to Cameron. Jack gets a good pass to Morales. Morales can do something here. She's going to take a shot. And I don't think that deflected off of a UConn player. Just kind of was between the two of them. So it's going to be goal kick for UConn. Twenty minutes remain in this ball game. This broken arrow is going to have to find a way to get on the board so we can go to penalty kicks or get two goals and just win it. 100% all that is possible. Just Tigers got to just play, play some good offense right here. That's good defense right there by Shaw. I mean, Sean defense. Four just ran right into one another with their ankles. Yep. But defense creates offense. So just kind of making your presence known defense. You can get some openings offensively. So hopefully, Tigers can end up doing that. As Conjure's going to get that one back to Anderson, who's going to get it to Dodd. And like I said, they're just going back and forth, trying to create some openings. No need to rush anything. We, we, got, we got some time. Although clock's not on our side, we can make something happen with this time that we have. And but they're applying pressure on Anderson. But it's going to stay to the Tigers. As Turner has it. I think UConn fans wanted a handball there, but. It kind of looked like it, but. It kind of, but I think she moved her arm yeah. out of the way at the last minute and took it off her chest. 100%. But Zaka keeps control of it. Good job right there by her. And good cross to. 
Good cross. I don't know if they're going to call offsides or the ball is a little bit too ahead, but she just put that ball right through where it needed to be. And looks like that one's just going to go out of bounds. This Redley was kind of flustered. Seems like whenever she kicked that one, didn't know where it went. And I think they're going to say, that's going to say Tigers. They're, oh, they're going to say UConn ball. And whistle was blown. So they're going to sub out. Jinx is now leading Bartlesville 3 0 in the second half. Alexis Trindle is getting subbed out for. I think that's Vienny Gonzalez, if I'm not mistaken, but. Rieger has it. She's going to get it back to. Now she's trying to get that one through, but it's going to go out of bounds. Or, excuse me, no, they're going to call they're gonna call a foul on, I think it was Majika right there. I don't know if she was being too rough, but they didn't seem like it. I guess they're just going to give that one to her, but that's going to be a potential free kick opportunity to get the ball into the net for Marley Ford. Ford has been the difference maker in this game. I know Jefferson scored that goal, but Ford has been – just given the fits on offense, defense, in the middle, you name it. Yeah, it's 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 it has been the the Marley Fort and the Alexis Rager show today. Yes. As, and they're gonna say that one goes to the Tigers. It's gonna call that that foul on Fort. But those two have been like clearly like the two two very like like you can see them those stars on the Tigers team and that one goes to Hanfrey and she's got she's got advantage. <coughs> Seventeen minutes now. Tried to get that one to Dodd, but a little bit to the right of her. Like we said, if Tigers can come back and win this, they would hold that tiebreaker over UConn. Oh, so we're both tied for first, correct? Is that it? Well, I meant it? like okay. with having the fact that we would become 3-1, and one, they would okay. fall to 3-1, and one, but we would own the tiebreaker against them. Yeah, because I know that Jinx game was not a district game, but... Rigger with the shot, and that one just barely goes above the net. So it's a good shot right there, but good job by Tigers kind of just penetrating around her, not letting anything get past her. But still, regardless of a great shot by Rigger, I'm shocked that she got that, that good of a look. So she kind of just shows like the pure Roth talent that she has. So they're going to get that one to Frey. She's going to get to Morales. You know, passing, it feels like Broken Arrow's had the better passing game so far in this game. 100%. But, but by I feel being like able to keep, keep it away in, in a lot of cases, I Jefferson mean, with the one goal. If if we kept um, track of possession, like, as a stat in high school, I would say that B.A. has had more possession. Yeah. But it just feels it, like. And it's not just tonight. I mean, you and I have been on this as our third game together. And it's been like that in almost every game that we've been a part of. Yeah, but it feels like just UConn just has luck of the draw, or they just seem to just get past us whenever we never expect it and just get a ball in the net. So this kind of has the same story as the Jinx game, it feels like, yeah, so far. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Just a dogfight throughout. As now we're, we're inching towards 15 minutes to go in this game, and Tigers just got to get – kind of got to start getting a little crazy and, and try to make something happen. It's, Majika's got it. Magic Majika. I've never called her that ever. I'm, that is a good one, Dan. Magic Majika. I think we might be starting something here. Ta, I like the purple people eat her shoes. That was the start of it all. That's right. Commentating volleyball. Nice header by Shaw. Good job right there by Rigo getting in front of it. Going to have to slow down Ford here. Puts a good move on Frey. She's got a shot, but. It's way off the mark. Too high up. Almost could have been a pass. Maybe it was a pass or a shot, whatever it was. Call it either or, but. It'll go back to Broken Arrow. On the side, we have Addison Castleberry and Martin getting ready to sub in and get into this game. You know, I will say shout out to those people that were on the other side of the field. As I have not seen a ball pass through in a while. Good cross. This could be an opportunity here, they're Jojo. Gonna, they're going to call off sides. Flag oh, went man. straight up immediately. I mean, it was, it was too good to be true. It's the story of soccer right there when that. 
whenever a, a player just passes through on the outside of the field, you can almost just feel that flag going up immediately. So that's going to be offsides called. That's, that could have been an that's opportunity. It's a tough break for Broken Arrow there. But I will say that that's a good start. I mean, hopefully we can just keep that going, just play it a little bit back on the side of whoever's going to, going forward. So if we were to do that, redo it again, we could get a goal. Rieger crosses that one. It's going to be a good header by Shaw getting that one to Turner. Getting it through, but that's just going to be right to Anderson who's going to clear it. Conjure put a little too much on that one, but Hawk gets it right back. A little Leah. It's going to be a miscue of a pass right there by Conjure. It's to go straight back to UConn, but... Henfrey's there to make sure nothing bad happens. A good job out there using yeah, her body. Great defensive effort out of Henfrey. So Allen will clean it out. Getting it to Frey. 12.30 to go. Majika's got it. She's going to pass that one back out. A lot of activities going on this evening with baseball, softball. It's also the Drillers' home opener in Tulsa. Majeka had the right idea with that cross, but didn't put a lot on it. So ended up going right back to UConn. But great, great idea, great vision. Just a little bit off with execution right there. But hopefully Tigers can just keep doing that as they have been, and they can just break through and get a goal. So that's got a good, a good turn by Jefferson. But good clearance right there. But I think it was either Frey or Henfrey. And Morales has it once again. Morales near midfield. Gets it back crossover to Turner. Turner, yep. Who has Machaka, who has, has a great give and go right there. Gives it through to Turner, but great, great job right there by Alexis Trindle, who has been quiet, def quietly like doing what she has been doing defensively. Hits that one off of Turner and gets it out of bounds for the goal kick opportunity. Number two, Addison Castleberry, and number eight, Bailey Martin. As Addison Castleberry and Bailey Martin come in for Cameron Majaka and Leah Condry. Eleven minutes to go. Good opportunity right here. Castleberry's got it with the cross, but nobody there. So, but Turner's fighting for it, and good defense right there. As she's just gonna clear it out. That was Alexis Trindle, but Castleberry had the right idea right there. Morales. She's got that one, but no call. I don't know how to feel about that one, but can't Martin, catch a break right now, JoJo. Martin keeps it, so but she's got a right back. That has been Marley Ford has just been the story of the of the UConn Millers, and she goes right back to the other key piece of this team as Rigger, who's going to cross it to Jefferson, and she could do something here, but good save right there by Allen. She's going to go back to the goal safely, but Ford's got it with the shot. Good job by. Frey getting in front of there makes another back can happen, but yeah, Allen came up right at the right time, then went back to the net to stay in protection mode. And that's going to be ball for the Tigers. Great job by Evan Shaw closing in that gap, doing what a center back should, given the, giving the offensive player no space and forcing her to get it out of bounds. So great job, pure pure true art in soccer right there by Evan Shaw. And that couldn't go out of bounds at a better time right there for the Tigers. Now they have a chance. This is a big opportunity as Castleberry's getting there. But good job by the goalie. Jaden really getting out there, kicking it. I mean, you would have thought with Castleberry's speed, she would have got there immediately. But just a, a beautiful job right there. By the goalie just getting out the net and getting it out of there. And 
I think they're calling that one on the Tigers. I don't know what the call was. Cassie, Coach Cassie Embry seems to feel the same way as me, kind of flabbergasted and questioning what that call was, but I'm going to let it slide. It's been a pretty, pretty fair, neutral call game so far. Shout out to the refs. As some of the fans don't agree with me. And UConn is just slowing it down. They know the clock's on their side, so they're just taking their time. Yeah, I'm not really the biggest hater of this, but whenever we do it, I'd be applauding it. So I'm going to stick, you know, with the double standard and just not not hate on it. As Castleberry's got it. She's going to pass that one to Morales, but Morales kind of let it go past her a little bit. But Tigers keep it. It's going back to Turner. Good touch right there by Turner. Turner She's putting trying some, to make moves. some magic. Crosses that one. Good shot right there by Dodd, but Dodd just was trying to sneak it in. Turner with some nice footwork. Good save right there by Rayleigh, just doing her duties, just getting on, getting where the ball was. She thought it was good read by her, saving it. But Tigers just from the get go, that was just beautiful. I feel like the Tigers have showed more offensive poise this whole game than UConn. Just that UConn had that one great goal. And there's a lot going on right now. They're still, going, they're still going at it. That's going to be a yellow for Castleberry for some reason. I don't know how that's possible because Castleberry walked away. Yeah, Kate Jefferson put her in a chokehold, Randy Orton style, and just took it to the ground. I was like, what? And so they're going to sub out Castleberry for Henson. So Henson will come in. Getting a little chippy out there. Yeah, it seems. I mean, it has been a pretty aggressive game, but not much. You know, Revis is kind of like no whistles it out. really in the first half, and then the second half we've seen more. I think the intensity and just the fact that knowing what's at stake, the two teams kind of letting it all out there on the pitch tonight. Dodd's got it. Gets it to Turner. <laughs> Turner with an open look. She Trying to get cross find this a corner. One. Yep. And, and we what, do. What a goal right there by Brooke Dodd herself, getting it in that right side. And we see the big BA flag go up and run as a sign of a goal for the Tigers. You would have thought after all that drama, all that hectic stuff going on, that that would have stayed 1-0. But no, the Tigers prevail as we hear a go BA from the fans. It's a game right here, Dan. Yeah, Dodd with a great kick to send it to the back of the net. With 7.02 left in the ball game, we are tied at one goal apiece with UConn. Now, with seven minutes to go, can the Tigers push forward and get a second goal and walk out of here with a second half advantage win? 100%. I feel like we've been saying it all game that Tigers has just been like that team offensively just doing more stuff, and it feels like that kind of just showed like what it, what it does whenever you keep playing that offense you have been doing. And Tigers just showed it. I think we can 100% get another goal within these seven minutes or go into PK's confident that something good can happen. As Hanson's got it, loses it, but does a good job trying to stay with it. Yeah, UConn takes it over for just the moment, but now it's right back to B.A. Six oh five left to go, Jojo. That, that should have been be offside, but they're gonna they're gonna let him play it out. Evan Shaw, good job keeping it, but won't matter. Shaw sends it back up to Turner. She's got to get it to Morales. Morales using her body. And Morales goes right back to Turner, but Turner loses her footing and it's gonna go out of bounds. Yeah, Turner was kind of going forward, and Morales kind of put it back, kind of put it flat. So over on the baseball diamond, it is now two to two, Enid and Broken Arrow. Turner had the it, bottom of the fifth. but then she lost it, and now it's Rieger. That's her and Freya kind of going back and forth, but Rieger keeps it. Kind of a one-woman show going on, but great job. Still going to call that one on UConn. I need a you can't do that right there because that was a great job by Hannah Anderson getting right in front of it, and Rieger got a little fresh at a hitter with a little bit of a shove in the back. No, 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 miss. You cannot do that here.
Alex Henson's got it. She's going to keep it. She's moving forward. Gets it to Martin, who's going to reset. And she's onside. Oh, they're going to call offsides, but. Can we just say she put it in the back of the head? Can we just count that, JoJo? I wish we could. I wish, too, but sadly, offsides with me. You know, you know why, um, me being a youngin, playing soccer early, early elementary school days, I had no issue with offsides. I was a cherry picker. I had no worries with waiting over there to, for them to, to get past a defender. I just was cherry picking. I got all the goals. But, you know, sadly, that's not how it is in older professional soccer. It's probably why I didn't pan out to being a great soccer player. But that's going to be a ball towards going to UConn. So 405 remains in the contest. They're going to call a foul on BA for Lord knows what. But I heard the term basketball. I don't know what he's referring to. This is soccer, but Tide is definitely switched with that goal, though, by Broken Arrow. million percent. I feel like the, the fans have woken up, not even just, like, our team, but just the fans, everybody in the stands, everything. is. Just, and Dodd kind of loses it. Yeah, Dodd lost it there. Rieger loses it. Good defense right there by Dodd. Kind of kind of getting it right back to make up for her default, but great job by Harris. Martin can get this one, but doesn't get to it. So that's Fort that has it, who's going to pass it to Sharp. Who does a great job staying with it and crosses that one. But great job by Anderson. And that should be a call. And we're going to get that call. Another you can't do that right there. Shaw's got it. Good give and go right there, but a little too much that was put on there by Martin. And yeah, Martin was trying to sneak that one in there. And that's going to be a sub out. So they're going to sub out Haley Solis for Vienna Gonzalez. Tigers looking for another sub, and eventually no, Castleberry get. will get back in. Throw in by UConn, goes right back to B.A. She's going to let it go out and give it a goal kick opportunity for the Tigers. Goal kick for the Tigers. Tigers. So Allen's going to look for an open teammate. They're going to sub out Landry Turner for Addison Castleberry, putting her on that left side, putting Tori Henson on this right side. So hope we can see something happen and get a goal within these last a minute and 40 seconds to go. If you have watched soccer, you know that anything is possible in a minute and 40 seconds. So the Tigers can make something happen with this minute and not have to go to PKs as Mr. Dan Hawk would love. As I say that, Castleberry is moving downfield, gets across. Henson was almost in front of it, but. Yeah, she had a, her defender just blocked her clean space there, so. UConn will get the ball right back. It's that cross. We can we can steal that one. It's gonna be a steal for Shaw. Henson's got it, but it's gonna stay with the Tigers as we're getting towards 50 seconds. It's gonna go right through the legs of Martin, but a little bit of chipping is going right there by Ford, but Tigers looking to clear it. Good job by Anderson, keeping it. Shaw's going to get it. At this point, it's staying over here. He's got to make sure to get it out of there or get a goal. One or the other. Castleberry's got it. 27 seconds. This is a crazy game. We're about to see a beautiful, you, know, you never know. I'm not going to speak too soon. There could be a goal, but. Morales trying to create some space. Five seconds. I think that's going to be the end of it. We're going to go into PKs. Rieger sends it up the middle, and that will do it. We're going to go to overtime first.
Oh, it's Dan and then play PK now. because it's district play. So we'll take a quick timeout on Aerovision and we'll have overtime here at Kirkland. Stay with us. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedists for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedists for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedists for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedists for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. And welcome back to Kirkland Soccer Complex. Two halves of play are not going to be enough tonight with UConn and Broken Arrow. UConn picking up their goal in the second half as well as Broken Arrow picking up the second goal to extend it. And as far as district rules are considered, we'll play a 10-minute extra time 
no score is in the first one, then we'll play another 10 minutes. And if there's no score in that one, then we'll go to penalty kicks. If one team scores, regardless if it's Broken Arrow or UConn, that is the ball game. So this 10 minutes here with UConn is extremely crucial. Dan Hawk alongside JoJo David. I feel like the Tigers have the momentum coming into this after scoring a late goal in that second half. 100%. I'm sorry. Misled everybody thinking that we were going to straight to PKs, but, you know, most of the games I have seen were non-district games that Correct. went to that. So I was basing it off of that. But so far, it's just been a beautiful game. As Dan said, the momentum has been for the Tigers the past 10 minutes. We scored that beautiful goal with seven minutes to play. But, I mean, Tigers have to keep doing what they have been doing, playing playing that good offensive stuff, getting some plays going for them, getting these little openings. Keep doing that. An opening will happen. There will be a goal. Could potentially be right here on this corner kick right here by Haley Hemphrey. But kind of just goes to show how much this Tiger team has just, like, gotten better every single week. So corner kick for Hemphrey. And that's a cross in there. They got opportunities. Morales has a strike. Oh, man but a little bit to the left, and she had some power behind that kick. Could have been a great opportunity, but. That would have been pretty magnificent for Morales to get that goal here in this extra frame. Yeah, to all of my World Cup watchers out there, we have seen, if you have been watching World Cup past, you know, 2010, 14, 18, and 22, we have seen some amazing golden, go golden, um, what is it, what? Golden goal, yeah, golden goal moments. That's what they call it, extra time most of the time, so. A lot can happen within here, and it would be beautiful to see a goal happen here. And Castleberry doing a good job staying there, but they're just calling her for everything. She seems to be playing pretty aggressive out here, so. But Tigers, I mean, the refs are just kind of calling it against her on everything. And that's going to be Tiger Ball as Hefford does a great job hitting that off of the, the UConn player, which was Cade Jefferson, the goal scorer from earlier on. And that was rough right there. Fort is getting into this ball game. That was pretty rough on Castleberry. Those two have been going at it with one another back and forth. Yeah, they are getting really aggressive right there. Morales making something happen. Crosses that one, but barely. Almost had it, but no opportunity. I mean, right there, man. Special teams, special players, special players. Shout out to all my sketch fans out there. Had to just say that one for once time. And that's going to be a kick out there for Jaden Rayleigh. So seven minutes to go here in this first extra frame. UConn stretching it. Good job by Anderson just clearing that one and keeping it in balance as well, getting it to the teammate. Good vision she had right there. So that's going to be a beautiful cross by Conjure to Dodd, and we've got something happening. She can get to the Castle Bear. She's onside. Hopefully she can keep that one in with her speed, and she does. But they're going to say blown. offsides. I don't know where that was offsides. I don't know about that one. And fans are just screaming, what, huh, what? Just hearing a lot from them. out of bounds. Six minutes to go here in the first overtime frame. Ford with the ball. We'll take this kick here. And this is an opportunity for them to make something happen as Marley Ford can boot this ball down there. Hammond back in the net for B.A. So they're going to clear that one out there. Good job using her head was Anderson. And Conjure's got it, just clearing it out, playing it safe. Good job by her. First five minutes have just flown by. Morales. She's got it. She can get it to a teammate. And just going to get it out of there. Fans screaming, run. She pretty, she was. But Turner's got it, using her body to get somebody open. She does, gets it to, to Anderson, gets it to Dodd. It's going to go back to Henfrey on this left side, looking for an open teammate. Morales.
Wallace trying to get something in there, and that's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, can, can give us some time to rest, relax, and reset and make something happen here with that ball going all the way out there. So Tyson can catch their breath and get ready to get out there. As Castleberry's got it, gives it to Henfrey, who's going to cross this one all the way through. And back to Henfrey. Oh, back where it all started for another throw in. Dodd gets it, gets it to him. Morales. Morales uses, does a great job using her body. Gets it to Martin, but Martin puts a little bit too much on it. But great job by Anderson getting it back to Castleberry. Dodd, the team captain, goal scorer to Turner. Henfrey gets a nice move on him. Fans are really invested into this, and Henfrey's going to get get an opening here. And another clear out right there by Alexis Trendle, who has been like their defensive like star, it feels like, so far this whole game. So Henfrey's going to cross that one. And I don't know what they're calling if that was – I don't know what – I don't even know what happened, to be honest. Well, it's going to go against Broken Arrow. And – these past seven minutes have flown by us. Now it's down to 3.15 to go in this first half of Golden Goal. And I don't, I don't know what's happening whatsoever. I, I really don't. This is not, she doesn't know how to follow simple extensions as she's getting told to go back, and she's just not. So UConn sends it to midfield. They're going to clear that one and keep it in. And that's going to be Tiger Ball. Good job by the ref noticing that that went off of Fort's foot. Down to 220 to remain. Yeah, Danny, feels like we've been here for five minutes that pass. This first half of the, the golden goal. Tigers in the middle. Send it up to Morales. No offsides here. They pull their oh, goalie. Still Morales has still has the ball, but her shot is off the mark. Great job of Morales right there. I feel like just her presence just scares everybody because the goalie just cowered in fear. She let go of that ball. I don't know what she was doing, but kind of forgot she had hands right there because ball went right past her. And Morales had an opportunity right there, just kind of took a shot at it, didn't really look. Shot a little bit to the left, but once again, Tigers are just like, just keep doing what they have it doing, just portraying their dominance this whole game. Over on the diamond, baseball is a winner over Enid, two to one, so they pick up the clean sweep of Enid. As we have an injured Miller down, that is Alexis Trindle. And we'll take a quick timeout. It is one to one with a minute 25 to remain in the ball game. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. 
Tulsa Bone and Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone and Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone and Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. And Trenda walked off with her own power. It's good to see her back, getting back up as we are still 1-1 here in this extra frame with a minute left. Tigers with a throw in. Yeah, shout out to Trindle. She has been a great, great player on the on UConn today. And she's been like, like kind of an event for them. But good job by him for clearing that one out. It kind of just shifted ways. We talked about at the beginning of this game how it was kind of just a clean, solid match, not too many calls. And after, it's just kind of just like shifted completely into like this like just crazy rough game. So you wouldn't expect it, but kind of just turned on us. As we go into some 6A girls soccer games going on around the area, Eisenhower and Westmore 0-0, Piedmont and Edmond Memorial 1-3 Memorial. We got That's Bixby. That's final. Yep, Bixby at Sand Springs up 5-0. Um, Bartlesville at Jinx, that game is over with a 4-0 win going towards Jinx. Norman North at Owasso with a 1-0 win towards Norman North. Um, Moore at Deer Creek with a win for Deer Creek. Putman North at Ponca City 0-0. Bishop McGinnis at Edmond Santa Fe, 2-3 final Edmond Santa Fe. UConn at BS, that's her right now, 1-1. And Southmore at Union is starting with a 0-0 score. And that's what's going on all around 6A girls soccer. As we get into 15 seconds to go with this corner kick, and that one looks promising. That one goes out, though. And that was Luckily. a good look right there by Rieger, but she kind of just put it a little bit to the right. That will probably do it here in the first extra period. So both these teams will regroup. It is one to one. You're watching Lady Tiger Soccer from Kirkland. Stay with us on Aerovision. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. 
If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. So two extra frames have not been good enough here at Kirkland. It is one-to-one. -one. Dan Hawk alongside JoJo David as we begin the second overtime frame. And we are back underway with another 10 minutes on the clock. Remember, if both teams are a unable to score in this 10 minutes here, we'll go to penalty kicks. And don't forget, we still have the boys game to follow. UConn and Broken Arrow. Good effort right there but we by Ford, get through but now this game go out. first. Yeah, it's been a crazy we'll game. Batters. We got nine minutes and 30 seconds to go in this nail biter of a game. And if we do, we're going to PKs for the second time in a row for these Lady Tigers. So they're getting tested, getting ready to go into hopefully a run for playoffs, going into this potential state game if we can get back there. It's a good job right there by Dodd, getting it to Martin, back to her. It's gonna cross it, but great job by the defender getting right in front of him. It's gonna go right back to the Tigers. And Hanson's got it, she's got the speed to get there, but she's got two Miller defenders there. I think it's gonna stay, to, stay Tiger ball. Row in for the Tigers. So Tigers will throw it in. It'll be Henfrey. And it goes back out of bounds. It's going to be a goal kick for them for Rayleigh. Goal kick for the Millers. Tigers get it right back, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, Frey just clears that one out to play it safe, and Gonzalez is going to get that one, get ready to throw it in, and Martin's got it. She's played a great game today. It's a good cross right there to Hanfrey. I mean, Going back to the point that we kind of talked about earlier. It looked like a hand play. Yeah, and Jeffers is going to, she's going to streak down there. She takes that one, but it goes back to. No, she gets it back, but Hawk does a great job getting the ball, and it's going to call that one on Jefferson. But kind of going back to the point of where we're missing, our key piece, Bianca Lopez, who is committed to UCO to play um, center back. She is actually, there is, she was out, not was not due to injury, but she had a red card in the Norman North game, so that kind of carried over into this game, which sucks, but knowing how, how passionate of a player that she is, she's ended up not in this game, but as of right now, hasn't really played too much of a bad factor. The Tigers have been pretty solid defensively on that side, so that one's going to stay Tiger ball, and Heavy's going to throw that one in. Throw in for the Tigers. So 6.45 remains here in the second overtime frame. JoJo said back-to-back -back games for Broken Arrow. They've had to play in overtime. Hopefully this one can end with a goal in here instead of having to go PKs. That last one was against Norman North in a second round of penalty kicks. It's a good cross right there, but Anderson does a great job getting in front of it and getting it out of there. Millers will throw it back in. Martin's got it now. The second Throwing overtime the frame, JoJo, it's been a lot of ball control for the Millers. 100%. I mean, both sides have been playing really well. I mean, this is this is like a, a game of the ages. If you put this on like a Premier League like stance or anything, anything too crazy, this has been a great game so far. Both teams have shown off some great... Great willpower, fight, skill, just everything you've seen in this game. 
It's just been a great game so far, and hopefully they can end with a Tiger victory in the end. But And that would be huge, as you said. It would kind of get us in that tiebreaker spot between us and UConn with that 3-1 and one record. So, And, I mean, we, we've been through tough battles going back from that from – that, um, Norman North game, one of our star players gets a red card. To jinx. Some injuries happen. A loss of jinx. We have been battle tested. So now if we can see if we can finish the battle. Not win the bat not win the battle, but win the war in a sense. Both teams obviously getting pretty sluggish out there as Martin's gonna get that one. A lot of time on the pitch this evening. Good cross, but a little too much on it. It's that easy goes to Rayleigh. I mean now the the goalkeeper's mindset, I'm pretty sure they're probably both thinking in their minds right now. I'm ready for those PKs. I mean, this is one thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to reference the guys here, but the guys, um, last year they lost in PKs in the finals to Jinx, and every single day after that game, they practice PKs at every single practice. So PKs is one essential thing in soccer because it's one of those things that can, that ends the game, so you got to be good at it. So Bad on pass. those what those two goalies are probably thinking, and Condry's got it. Condry trying to find a corner. Just trying to send it in the middle. But it goes right to Yuko. That's going to stay, hopefully, for the Tigers as Turner has it. Just going to fight for it and keep it. And Martin loses it, though. Now I think it's probably just going to go out. And it does. Three forty to go. Good move. Morales with Turner the ball in the middle. It. Tigers with a chance here. And, and that should have been a call right there as the goal that kind of interfered and hit Hansen as she's down. Slow to get up. She eventually does. And that's going to stay UConn ball. It's just 3.15 to go. As the other Martin sister is going to get ready to get in this game. UConn playing very <laughs> aggressive, hanging on to the Tigers. It's becoming crunch time here in this second period. Momentum has definitely slowed down. I think both teams are just feeling it. I think they're just getting ready their Third. minds for PKs yeah, at this point. Yeah, I think point. in some ways they are. I might have jinxed ourselves by talking about it earlier. Yeah, I mean, hey, who, 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 who would be mad at seeing a PK matchup, honestly? That will be the first one on this stream for this, this year, correct? I I'm believe honest. so. It is. It's going to be beautiful to see. Hopefully a Tiger victory. See how that like, kind of rhymed? Yeah, I, I had to put one on you early because you put one on me. But good job right there by Martin. Crosses that one to Morales. She could do something here. And just loses it. Good defense right there by Brooke Berland. Good job getting it out there by Gonzalez. but Goes back to the middle. And uh-oh. Rieger's got it. And Rieger she's just going to – that was kind of pointless. I'm going to put a question mark behind that one. And she just kind of booted it. And easy save right there for Hammond. And now a minute for you to go. I think everybody's minds are just towards the PKs. PKs. That one's going to roll out. And guys, all just taking her time, getting up there. No need to rush, it feels like. It's that throwing. Lily did absolutely nothing except give it back to the Tigers. So they're going to sub in Nicole Martin for Tori Hansen. So Martin getting a crack in there with just a minute left to play here in the second period, or excuse me, the second overtime period. So Martin's got it. She just keeps control of it, gets it. And Jefferson's got an opportunity here. It's on her side. She's got to boot it out of there at this point. Good job by Anderson closing in that gap and getting right in front of it. Yeah, Anderson cleaned it away. 
That's that's that collegiate level soccer soccer plan. I mean, going to NSU next year. Martin's got it. Tigers have a chance. Nesta Morales. And her shot just wide right. Good shot by Morales. I thought that she was going to pass that to Contry, but I think that she had the keen sense that Contry was going to be offside. Took it to her own hands, or feet, I shall say. Took the shot a little bit to the right, but great strike right there by Morales. Five, four, so with five three, seconds, two, one. and we're heading off to penalty kicks here at Kirkland. 1-1 one, one tie, UConn and Broken Arrow. We got you covered with the penalty kicks coming up next on Aerovision. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Tulsa Bone and Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedist for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedists for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. And welcome back to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Penalty kicks. What a night to do it. The wind is kind of picked up a little bit. So it'll be Broken Arrow to start it off, and I'll let JoJo take over right here. Yeah, and Brooke Dodd's going to have our first shot. Team captain herself, and they're going to send Hammond off a little bit, but Dodd's going to shoot this one on Rayleigh for the first one. <laughs> kind of a throwback to that first goal that she had to start it off for the Tigers. Whistle blows. And she hits the, hits the upright on the right side. I think... That one was very close from going in, but it is still 1-1. One, one. So that's 0-1 oh, on the basis of speaking on PKs. Correct. But Hammond, I mean, we know she can save these, and that's going to be Alex or yeah, Alex Rieger, who has been one of the 
go-to girls on this UConn team today. So hopefully Hammond can stop that momentum that she has had this whole game. And unless she's going to have some power behind this kick. Rieger's kick gets to the back of the net. Right down the middle. Hammond went a little bit to the right. She just went right down the middle with some good power. So hopefully Turner can just knock it down in this net right here on Rayleigh. So now for penalty kicks, 1-0 advantage for UConn. Turner's just got to put this in a good spot right here. Got to put a little more, more power on it than Dodd did too. Turner's kick is blocked. Good save right there by Riley. She just read it like a book immediately. Dives to that left side of the net where she was kicking it. Easy save for her. And now going up there. Is Marley Fort. Once again, another key piece on this team. Getting back out there. And she can't knock this in there, but Hammond has the ability to save this one here. As we await the whistle. That one sneaks in as well. Now I believe. So it's 3-1 on penalty kicks. I believe if, well, I believe if she makes, if she misses this, I think it's a UConn win immediately. I'm not sure, not. I never, you know, for as much as I watch soccer, I never really got the, I know it's like if it's a, a plus two set, uh, difference, that's whenever they end the game, but hamphrey has got to get this one in the back of the it's net. first to five. So Hamphrey needing to get this one to the back of the net. She was unable to get it to go. Beautiful save by Riley. Yeah, if this is a make right here for UConn, that is game. I mean, let's talk about that difference earlier. So Heyman's got to Heyman's got to have her moment right here and just make sure to save this one. So Rieger will go for her penalty kick. She gets that to the back of the net. And that's going to be a win for the UConn so Millers. UConn is victorious. They go to 10-1 on the year and 4-0 in conference. Broken Arrow falls to 7-3 overall, 2-2 two two in conference. We will take a quick timeout. And we'll have the boys game coming up on Aerovision, UConn a winner over Broken Arrow. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. The girls in the regular frame went one and one, but off of penalties, UConn was a winner, three and two zero. So now the boys will square off against UConn. Broken Arrow ten and one, three and zero oh in the district. UConn seven and three, three and zero oh in the district. Winner will claim the top spot in District Six A three as of now. Broken Arrow has seven wins out of eight matches against 6A teams. They're averaging almost two and a half goals a game. They've conceded less than a goal in the year so far. Longest winning streak has been eight matches. Big win margin, five goals. They're six and one. Victory over Putnam City North was the most that they've scored in a game. So it's a big one. For UConn, they have four wins out of their last six matches. They average four and a half goals a game. They've given up about a one and a half margin. Longest winning streak is three matches. Biggest win margin, eight goals against Ponca City. And they have nine wins. Correction, played nine games away from their complex. And they are also seven wins on the road. JoJo David is my color analyst and he's going to go over the starting lineups for us. Yeah, we are in for a good one today, Dan. Number one versus number two showdown on the BA roster. At goalie, we have the man E-Boss, Evan Boss. At defense, we have Jack Hendrickson, Jack Attack. We got Jack Irvine also back there. Cam Pedworth, Pedworth at that mid area. Josh Ngoy, the African Prince, as some might say, at the striker position. Mario Naranjo, Ben Osborne, Alex Morofsky. Tea Time, Tristan, Marcus Givens, Charlie Baker, the singer himself, and that'll end out the starting lineup for the Tigers. And for UConn, we have Pedro Villibre, Ethan Lawson, Adam Castillo, Xavier Scone, Ethan Nicol Nicolo, Nathan Reese, Devon Favors, Kyle Booten, Hudson Jacob, Mason Morris, and Austin Becerra at goalie. And like I said earlier, we're in for a good one. We got a lot of stars out there. A lot of good stuff can happen within these next 80 minutes of soccer play that we have. And baseball was a winner over Enid today, 2-1. to one, So they have the season sweep of the Plainsmen. And on the softball complex, Broken Arrow, a 13-2 win over Bixby. And in game two, a 13-10 win over Bixby. Eight run bottom of the six helped a ton. So good effort out of our boys and girls baseball and softball teams. We are underway at Kirkland. Yeah, there goes Mario Naranjo starting off with the ball, getting it off to, to Osborne, back to Jack Attack, Jack Hendrickson himself, or some might say my sunshine. That's what he likes to be called nowadays sometimes. Him and Alex Morofsky, dynamic duo. This team has a lot of good chemistry, a lot of good friends on this team that I have, I can say myself. So we're in for a good one to see my guys succeed against one of the best teams in their district. Yeah, in uh, UConn wearing the white tops, white bottoms, Broken Arrow wearing all blacks. Broken Arrow on the attack right now, trying to get it over in the middle near the net. Good stuff going back and forth with Ngoy and Morofsky right there. And Givens has it. He's going around, and that's just going to go be a goal kick for Becerra. He's going to get some activity as he has the green top on. You know, a very rare color I've seen, but he's not the one who's taking the kick. It'll be one of the defenders taking it. And for you baseball fans out there, the Tulsa Drillers with their home opener against Arkansas, they are leading 2-1 to one in the top of the six. I just want to say that Ben Osborne just took Devon Favors on a trip to the ground and took his ankles immediately. Then I'm not going to really talk about him his first two minutes in the game, but I just got to say shout out to Osborne with those moves. Him and Irvine have underrated handling, I mean, ball skills from what I've seen these past few games from this boys team. One final in boys soccer, Mustang and Lawton, 10 nothing Mustang. I like how the refs let him play that out. Good, good, yeah, good job right there by Baker. So far. Lot at stake. Winner, as we said, will take the top spot at 6A3 in the district. So far, so smooth. And that's going to be a good good cross right there to Ngoy, but they're just going get to get it right back on their side. Very physical game so far between the Miller of UConn and the BA Tigers. Yeah, Osborne's there. She's going to get it to Ebos. 
and are always comfortable whenever the ball is in Ebos's hands and he has not really let us down so far when he's back there in the net. Coming back from an experienced season last year on this team and another one, another one of those star-studded guys on this team. That's why he's a captain, but one of those big pieces to this team and why they're successful so far. Yeah, only one loss for Broken Arrow this year. They've found their stride on the season and have been really able to play some great soccer. So far, it's just it's a quiet, slow-moving tempo type of game right here. Nothing too crazy. It's really, really mellow. That's the word to use. That's the word of the day right there, mellow. Don't know the definition of it, but, you know. As in Carmelo Anthony or just mellow? No, uh, just just mellow. You know what? What really annoyed me is whenever like whenever like Lamelo Ball came in the league and they called him mellow. It's only one mellow. Even though I didn't really get to watch too much of mellow, like the Braids, Carmelo Anthony. I saw more of the Knicks, Carmelo Anthony. But and the temperature right now is 66 degrees. I will say this wind has died down. There's basically no wind at this point. About 10 miles an hour for our wind for this contest between these two. Jack attacks Scott. He's going to get that one to Ngoy. Good touch right there. Keeping control of it. Putting some ball moves. Putting them on skates. Down to the ground was Scone right there. Couldn't handle the moves of Josh and Ngoy. So far, I mean, I feel like it's been 50-50. Both teams have a good, good fair amount of the ball in yeah, their I hands. I think they're both still trying to feed each other out. Yeah, they're, they're not really rushing it too much. And, you know, we got two of the coaches on the side. We have Coach Smoker, and good save right there by Evan Boss. So that was risky. Good sh good, good shot right there by UConn, but great job by E. Boss, keeping his hands active, not letting anything go past him. But kind of backs to coaches. You know, I talked about Coach Smoker, and another one of their coaches, they like to call him Unk. I don't know which Unk. coach it is. They call him Unk. It's like, what's up, Unk? You know, Uncle Drew is, has changed the game. You know, I mean, I never heard anybody called Unk until after the Uncle Drew movie, but they do call that coach to the left to smoke. I don't know his name. I don't know which one he is, but they call him Unk on Unk. a lot of them. Okay. Do you have a nickname for me? Dan the Man. Yeah, it's just ah. the most boring nickname ever. If you give me, like, a little bit of time, I could definitely cook Okay, you got a half of football to come up with a name. Okay. Good job by Henderson using his head to get that ball out of there. That one goes out of bounds, so UConn will take over. Dan, do you have a nickname for me? Ooh. The chosen one. Mm -mm. I don't want. Don't boost my ego, man. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate all the viewers staying with us on Aerovision tonight and watching both of these contests. Good as job that one getting that one out there. Out. A lot of ball heading. That's going to be a push off right there by Pedro Villibre. As he kind of gave uh, gave the shoulder shrug right there to the ref, but ref said that was clear on you, brother, and he's still complaining. So 34 minutes remain here in the first half of play. Henderson gets that one over to Charlie Baker. I mean, Charlie Baker. Actually, last game that we called, he got man of the match. He got the MVP. That's right. And he had a beautiful goal, which was called with a quote from his song, Overthink. You know, a shameless plug right here, but go stream Overthink. And his new song, I forgot what it's called, but check out Charlie Baker on all streaming platforms. That's going to be a bottle and goy, but he loses it. And he's doing a good job staying in front of the UConn players. Ball goes out of bounds. I have a nickname now for Dan the Man. You know, Dan's name is Dan Hawk, so we're going to call him the Hawkeye. The Hawkeye. The Hawkeye is so, Dan the Man. So for MASH, okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm being <laughs> you don't, you don't, I don't, I don't expect you to yeah. know the show, JoJo. I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> I'm too young for these guys, man. 
Tigers working in the middle. Naranjo's got a good gift to Givens. He can keep that in. Uh, Tries to. That's going to go out. Unable to keep it in. But good feed right there by Pebworth getting it to him. But just a little bit too much on there. And Givens is, is a fast guy, so he could have got that one. Just a little too much on it. So 32 minutes left here in the first half of play. Dan, how do you feel about um, being called Hawkeye? Would that we, do you rock with that? It's, yeah, I mean, I've heard it before. <laughs> it's not really original. Dang it. All right. <laughs> Chat GBT failed me. <laughs> you Good job by Givens getting in Givens front of that one. Givens taking it away. naranjo has got to get into <laughs> Narofsky. Just a little too much leg. Should be a corner, but looks like it's going to go back to UConn. Yeah, I thought it streaked the player on UConn a little bit, but it just touched the, touched the Tiger player. Some scores for you. First half, Edmund North 2, Norman 0. Edmund Memorial on top of Piedmont 2-0. to zero. And Jinx and Bartlesville still in the first. One nothing jinx. And the one final, like we said, Mustang and Lawton. Ten nothing Mustang over Lawton. Yeah, speaking of that, we're gonna give a shout out to our one club sponsors. Once again, they never fail us. First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Ascension St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTC Federal Credit Union, the Arrow Group, and Quick Trip, and then Tiger Threads. Go check them out at the new facility that we have. Good shot right there. E Boss got it. Gets back on him. Back to this awesome plug for Tiger Threads. Go check them out. Open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And all teachers, students, and well, all staff of Broken Air Public Schools gets a beautiful discount. So go shop over there. 30 minutes remain here in the first. Goodness, this time is moving by. E-Boss. Uh, it seems that... Some of my nicknames for these guys have caught on into the Hawkeyes language. Or should I say Dan? Just stick Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that nickname lasted like three minutes. It's going over to Charlie Baker. Don't overthink this one. Good pass the, to Morofsky. The quickness of Broken Arrow seems like they have the upper hand. Good moves by Morofsky. Keep control of it. That's going to be a nice good pass. Nice pass, yes. To Ngoy, who's going to let it go by to Givens. And a little too much on that one with that left foot. Way upwards on that left post. And that's going to be out in a goal kick for UConn. And I that's going to. I think Givens was trying to bend it, but I think he put too much leg on it. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of what Ngoy did there. You know, a lot of players on that. On that through that uh, Morovsky gave, you know, um, and Goy would have just taken it, but he kind of just like put his put his foot out forward, kind of just pump faked him, put it right back for Givens to take it. You know, that kind of messed with defender's mind, think he's gonna get it, so it just went right through Givens. Good opportunity right there. So kind of Tigers just taking that first initiative of claiming that sense of you know where we have we have advantage as of right now. So good stuff right there. As tea time goes for the header. Morofsky's got it, fighting for it. He's going to get it to Naranjo. Back to Morofsky. He's going to put some moves on him, but lets the ball let him go a little bit too ahead of him. You know, Dan, one thing I will say that I love that Coach Smoker does, I don't know if it's a Smoker thing or just been a soccer thing, but all the years of me being in high school, Smoker's been the coach, but every single game day, um, the boys dress up business casual mm -hmm. every single day at school. And not even business casual. I mean, like some days they'll be like in some boots and jeans and like a, a button up, but sometimes they'll be like full suit. So it's 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 impressive to see how smokers taught these young boys to be true men dressing up very nice and casual for just a basic school day. That's going to hit the noggin of Adam Castillo. You know, not only that, just the aspect that both the boys and the girls team, they stay for each other's game and watch their their classmates and cheer them on. So Yeah, it's, that, it's, it's that, a huge culture thing. Yes, it is. Which you love to see. I mean, even we saw that um, after the girls' game. I don't know if it was on stream or not, but Special Olympics got that shout-out um, for, you know, boys and girls soccer has – been the number one team that's supported Special Olympics through freezing for a reason and things like that. So just see the culture between these two 
these two sports is just amazing to see. You, I mean, not even just on like a sport aspect, just a life aspect in general. Did you jump in this year? You know, it's cr so. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a cheerleader. So um, for the for um, for, reason, for a reason, I was not able to participate because in the past, um, like cheer and tie gets they go to nationals around that same time. Different reason for a reason and. A lot of the times whenever you come back from the chips, they get sick. And most of the coaches were like, okay, we're not going to let those two groups do it because we don't want them to get sick. Cause people Before got, the competition, Yeah, right? people got really, like, sick bad. So to prevent that, they just said we couldn't do it, which sucks. I really wanted to. Good moves right there. He's going to go for the shot, but easy save for E-Boss. Clap that one up. It's Ethan Nicolo had to, had to put on some good moves right there, but E-Boss right there for the easy save. Boss made that look pretty easy. Very. It's going over to Osborne. Another beautiful thing. We know we talk about culture a lot with these boys and girls teams, but not a single man is sitting on that bench on that side. They are waiting to celebrate their brethren. If they score, if they do something crazy, they're just on the side ready to congratulate and celebrate them. So we love to see that. As Hendrickson gets it to Givens, gets it back to J.H., they're just going to reset. Nice pass across the field. Good one to Morofsky. I like how the Tigers, how, to, how this, um, this guy Tiger team plays. They just play patience. They, did, they just wait for it to come to them. They don't have to force it or anything. Naranjo's got it. And they can make something happen, but that might be a corner. And that's going to be a corner right here. Huge opportunity for the Tigers to make something happen as we – if we remember our last game, the, the goal was scored off of a, um, a goal from a corner kick by Alex Morofsky. So that is what we love to see. So we hear some coaching tips. I think that's Jack Irvine's going to be the one who's going to take the corner. Yep, Jack Irvine is going to send this one in. To a little far out, but it kind of worked in their favor because they still have the ball. Morofsky's got it, and that's going to be a either a corner or a throw. Throwing, I believe. Yes, it didn't go out where I thought it did, but it's going to be a throwing. Good cross right there. Tigers trying to get something quickly. Shot is going to go out of bounds. It's going to be another corner. Good good job defensively right there. I believe it was um, Mason Morris who put his who jumped up and it hit it. the bottom of his foot right there. So good job by him getting in front of Irvine, not letting the goal get in there. But we hope to see the Tigers get something happen from this corner kick. So kind of like an instant replay. Just a little bit of a lower attack to it, and Naranjo's got it. Pebworth's got it, loses control of it, but as UConn's got it now. Streaking down the field is it's Devon Favors. Favors yep. And he's got two on him, but he's still making moves. It's given to stay in there though. Good job by the Tigers making their defensive presence known. As they're gonna go to Ngoy, but he loses it. I mean, I, I can say as of right now, it's probably like a 65-45 possession Tigers. Or 65-35, excuse me. Couldn't even do simple math. But, yeah, so far it's been pretty good possession for the Tigers. Already down to 23 minutes, kind of like the girls game. They're letting these teams both play. This Pebworth's got it just kind of going around, putting circles on them. Getting a little chippy with one another. Goy's Goy. got it, but oh my gosh, no That's call? Question mark? Well, both of them tackled one another near the out of bounds mark. Yeah, it's so. my broken arrow bias right there, but good cross right there. Oh my goodness, putting them on skates, and he's just playing around with them. What an opportunity right there, but luckily he missed that one. And a, what a strike right there. I mean, from the beginning to the end. That was just beautiful soccer work right there by UConn. 
as I think that was Hudson Jacob kept control of it. I mean, first he missed the opportunity to get that ball in the net, gets it back, gets the opportunity, and gets it back in there. So just shows that if you give given a second chance, you can make anything happen, and he did that just now. A little bit of chippiness led to that, but great strike in the net right there by him, and that's going to be a 1-0 one, one lead for UConn to start it off early. So with 22.49 to go, Hudson Jacobs gets the Miller on the board first with a 1-0 lead. So now the Tigers are going to have to play from behind. Plenty of time to get this going. I know it's like a, a corny thing to ask and question. You know, it's people using it as like a, uh, a joke towards other schools. But I truly want to know, what is a Miller? Like a Yukon, like a Miller. Uh grain I think I think it's part of farming oh, farming grain. I think their logo is a corn like the corner I, I think I remember making a graphic for them but shout out to grain shout out like, to grain I, I guess I, I don't know this is no disrespect to UConn by the way this is just out of the curiosity of my mind and that's just gonna go straight back to Austin Becerra he's gonna look for the open teammate like even a plainsman for Eni, I don't even know what that is. Tea time loses control of it, gets it over to UConn, but great job by JH, the man himself. The wall that stops the ball, Jack Hendrickson gets control of it. He's going to take his time when it gets into Irvine. You know, they always, the PA announcers always get these two confused. I don't know why, but they always talk to me about it. And they're always like, dude, they need to get it right. I'm like, man, I don't have that power, but the best I can do is say something. So we have a, a definition of what a Miller is, and the Miller, the name Miller was used to identify the individual response for opening the mill early in the morning and locking the mill late in the evening. And in the fall of 1930, Yukon Public Schools decided to honor the local industry and change the school mascot from the Yukon Panthers to the Millers. Really? And many visiting teams thought that the Millers were the small moths commonly found in sacks of flour. Okay. What year was that again? 1930. 1930. So they were the Panthers. Yeah. I don't know why they changed. Well, well, I do now, but. So the Yukon Panthers changed to the Yukon Miller. That's what you get when you watch soccer on Aerovision. You get facts. If you're not tuned in, I don't know what you're doing. It's always educational. History lessons with educational professor Jojo David. Uh, don't call me that now. I'm far away from anything that has to do with education, man. But that's a that's a cool that's fact. That's a very interesting fact. That sounds like a trivia question. Kind of a delay of game here a little bit is the Miller kicking it from their own net. It's some good soccer so far that we've seen between these two teams. It's going to go all the way to the corner. It's going to go out. It's going to be ball for the Tigers. Osborne's looking for the throw in. That's going to stay Tigers. It's not, not Tiger way, actually, but. Naranjo had it, but they're just going to boot that one out. It's going to go to. So with 19 minutes left here in the first half. That is crazy. It does not feel like it has been down to that much. Time's moving by fast, man. But still, nil one to the UConn Millers. Tigers need this win right here to maintain number one in the district, contain and keep that dominance that they have had this whole season so far, as they are really good contenders for the state championship this year. Good give and go. Getting that one to Morofsky. The Argentinian man. Just 
Charlie Baker's got that one, gives it back to Hendrickson. She's gonna turn his body, give it to Irvine. She's gonna play it safe, get it back to E-Boss. Just reset, find an opening, do what you can do. The tempo is definitely gonna need to pick up for Broken Arrow, and you really don't wanna trail one nothing going into halftime. The jungle squad still out here in full force. Yes, sir, they are. E-Boss is going to boot that one deep and high right there to Morofsky. Kind of trapped in a corner right there. He's going to turn around and make something happen himself. Gets it to tea time. Tea time looking for the open guy. CB Charlie Baker gets it. That was stolen by them. Good job by them right there. And one thing, one thing I will say, um, these these white jerseys that the UConn Millers are wearing, it's just pure white. Reminds me of my friend, um, Jace Gregor. He has a lifted truck, and it is just pure white, 35-inch wheels. Beautiful truck that he has. But it just, I don't know, just the pure white of the, the jersey just reminds me of that truck. So just shout out to that lifted truck right there, man. So you're going to get it to Osborne. Osborne. Puts on some moves. Still on his feet. And that Finally should be a the call. Gets back know. up. Hit him with the gymnastics moves. Don't understand how there was a no call there, but we'll play on. paraboard has got it. I believe this is the first game that we have called on Aerovision that Broken Arrow has trailed to start it out. I think we're talking, talk, if we're talking about the guys, and yeah. So far we have seen dominance so far between them when it comes to home games. Osborne can throw this one deep. Yeah, Osborne's going to chuck this one in. Almost equivalent to a corner kick right there, it feels like. Good toss by him. As that the one's going to go back are, out of bounds. They're going to get a corner kick as we speak, so hopefully we can see something happen here. Nagoy not going to throw it in. Going back to can't see this Irvine, one. Irvine. Jack Irvine. Thank you. You know, one thing, um, Goy, here. we always joke around and call him Goy the African Prince, and he hated it, but... Now he's became fond. He, he's enjoyed the name and actually has requested that that be his nickname. So let's see that. Tigers trying to get one in. And that's in the box. We can make something happen right here. Irvine got it. Tigers reset with Irvine. Going to put on some moves. Get it in that back corner. Close. Charlie Baker's got to get it back up there. Some good headers going on as the ball's still up in the air. Finally goes down and it's going to be roll goal out kick. of bounds. Yeah, goal kick for Miller. So we got some guys getting ready to sub in. It's Jack Irvine, Marcus Givens, and Alex Morofsky getting some rest. Some got good, great guys to have out there. It's Javi Mangalez is going to go out there. Derek Roberts. Derek Roberts and big man himself, Hector Pacheco. Out there to finish out these three guys. Pacheco clearly has the height advantage on the field right now. And he was something special in our last game that we called on Aerovision. I'd like to thank our one club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Since in St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Aero Group, and Quick Trip. Shout out to all those places, and don't forget, also a huge shout out to Tiger Threads. Visit Tiger Threads at 220 North 23rd Street, Suit 61 at the new event center. For all your fan gear needs, located at the northeast corner of the new school event center in the south end zone at Tiger Stadium, open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. with discounts for all Tiger staff. Good steal right there by Tea Time getting there. That was pretty dangerous. Good opportunity for... UConn to get a goal, but he just booted that one out of there. Pacheco trying to race that one down. The girls lost in penalties, 3-0. They had it tied in the regular frame, 1-1. One, one. Other scores from around the area for you. Second half, Bishop McGinnis, Edmond Santa Fe still scoreless. Edmond Memorial 2, Piedmont 0. That's in the first. 
Jinx Bartlesville at the half. Jinx on top, one nothing. Edmund North, two, Norman, zero. That's at the second half. Union and Southmore, Southmore leading Union, one nothing. And our one final, Mustang over Lawton, 10 nothing. The boys baseball team took care of business against Enid for the season sweep of the Plainsmen. And Broken Arrow was victorious in their doubleheader against the Bixby Spartans. So Man, Mustang 10-0. 10-0. Speaking of 10-0, I believe that next week, or not next week, but April 19th will be senior night for the boys and girls soccer teams. So t I think we will be streaming that one. If not, show up and show out at Kirkland Soccer Complex. Be there for that game for all these beautiful boy and girl seniors that play this beautiful sport of soccer. As we play Ponca City. Yeah, I believe we are on the call that night. So check us out on AeroVision on the 19th. B -b moves by Nicola, who is their team captain. And JoJo, the magnificent David, will be with me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, good move by Naranjo right here. Still on his or, feet. Magala is actually not not Naranjo. As Javi's putting on some moves. Thought it was Naranjo, but as Javi's going to get right in front of that one too. But tea time gets it. Gets it to Pebworth. Christian Plata Froilan, long name right there, number 22, was out there. Had the ball for a little bit of time. It's getting chippy out there as so I think the Jack Irvine just kind of him and um, Ethan Nicolo kind of knocked each other down a little bit. Nicolo has it, putting on some moves. Deep shot. Strike to that upper right post. Did not get it in, but a good strike at net. So they're going to get a ball back out there to E Boss. Good boot right there by Coach. Smoker telling his boys, hey, we got to pick it up. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's that's the one thing you – I mean, there's a lot you could say, but, I mean, to all sum it up, you just got to pick it up. I mean, starting off sluggish, letting them go past us. I mean, you just gotta, we just got to do what we, what we can do good, and that's just putting the ball in the net, as we have been. Just playing some back and forth, Hendrickson and Charlie Baker, who both actually share, you know um, – my fourth hour is student council in there. They're right across from me in the student union and Mr. Sutterfield's fourth hour. So I always go in there, see them all snazzed up and dressed up as they always talk to me about this upcoming soccer game, life, things like that. So those two have a good connection outside of soccer. So we'll have to see that as Pacheco has control of it. And he loses it. Gets it right back, though. So Javi's got it. Gets it back to Pacheco. A lot of fighting for the ball. So staying in that box area, but good clearance right there. Pebworth the cross, but good job by UConn getting right in front of yeah, it. Yeah, UConn has just been playing right in front of the net and not giving much opportunity for Broken Arrow to find an open look. Yeah, they, they've been like like just sound on the defensive end so far. So they've been playing stellar. Nothing you can say bad about it so far. Good cross, but nobody. And that's oh. going to go in. Oh, my goodness gracious. Cameron Pebworth. With a strike to the back. I didn't expect that, Dan, did you? No, Pebworth, like, threw that up. Looked like he was going to go for a pass. But just had enough lift on it. And we see the big B.A. flag in. getting ran. But well, I didn't even I, – I jumped to my feet in excitement because I did not expect that. That was – looked like that was a pass to me, Dan, and then he just it just went in. The goalie didn't expect it. He was in the same spot as us, but that – is what we want to see is now it's 1-1 level. Now you can see the momentum has shifted completely towards the Tiger side. Wow. Unbelievable shot. Tiger's on the attack again. Ah, goes right past and go ahead. Kind of had to spread his legs out, get over there to get that ball, but went right past him. That's Unk. Unk is talking to Pacheco right now, giving him some coaching tips. 
So 1-1 one, one ball game now with that goal by Pebworth. Yukon works the middle. Good job by Osborne. Osborne, just using his whole body. Osborne's one of those guys on this team that's just so darn good, man. He, he started the he started for the team last year on that state championship roster team and just came back this year. He's just a presence to be known for. So Hendrickson, Jack Attack steals that one. And I mean, the guys are clicking it. It's gonna get that one to, to tea time. Osborne has become something really special. Yeah, well, I mean, he, it just ha him. He, he's a senior. Having a lot of these senior guys on this team means something. And from what I've heard, the the um, the freshman team on the, the the freshman class for soccer is stacked. Like these guys are up and coming, like really good. So I mean, a lot of these seniors are a part of that because they did. They are, they are one of those leaders for those group of guys. So kind of seeing them set the way for what this team's future is going to be is just beautiful to see. I mean, we all we talk about it a lot. We've been yapping about it 24/7 on these streams about the culture of Broken Arrow soccer, boys and girls, and it just shows on like levels of anything. You know, fun at their um, they had like this like event with the boys and girls soccer, and they had to like do it. And Charlie Baker had a live performance of singing two of his songs, one of them unreleased. It was really cool to see. I, 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 some one of my friends sent me a video, and I was, I was fangirling. Watching the video. Fangirling? Yep. I am Charlie Baker's biggest fan when it comes to his music. But Wait a minute. We had a discussion. I thought you were my biggest fan. I'm, I'm a fan of a lot of people, Dan. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big supporter of all, man. What can I say? Good cross right there. Another chance for the Tigers nearly gets in. Good one right there by Ngoy, but he, he, he kind of just tapped it, so it didn't have the full potential of what it should have been getting in there. Hendrickson, jack attack. With the cross, dude. Just Dan, a little too far. Dan, come on. Found it right there. Dude, I just love it, man. The nicknames are catching not only for me, but to Jack, so, or to Dan. So jack attack right there. Pacheco keeps control of it, gets taken away. Feels like after that goal by UConn, it was all UConn, but after that goal by Pebworth, feels like the Tigers have just had everything going towards their way so far. Getting these opportunities to get towards the net and things of that nature. So with six minutes to go, Tigers have really picked up the tempo with 10 minute, at the 10 minute mark. Just gonna kick this set, set this one deep. Osborne's got it. Gets it to Javi. Just going to repeat the words that Unk said. He just said, Javi, work. Send it back to E-Boss. Just playing sound soccer right now. Not, not, not rushing anything, just playing it smooth. So with five and a half, five minutes to go, you're in the first half. Pacheco loses that one, but they hope to get it back as UConn's got it. Roberts has it. <laughs> Mario putting some moves on him, and they're gonna cross that one to Pacheco. And I think that might be a corner or a goal kick. They're going to say goal kick. thought that one was off a, Uc uh, a UConn player, but I guess I was mistaken. And UConn goal going kick. to their UConn. bench. Hmm. Hudson Jacobs checking in for Jaro Diaz. Plenty of time here, JoJo, still for Broken Arrow to get one more on the board. Very much. I mean, we got a whole other half of soccer to play, too, not just that. Had a lot going on, but just lost it and got it back to UConn. But Tigers 
Get it right back. Seems to be a story of the game so far. Lose it, get it right back. That one's going to go out of bounds. And that's going to be subbing in Noah Allen and Jeremiah Rosinski for Mario Naranjo and Hector, or not, or yes, Hector Pacheco. You know, Jeremiah Rosinski, one of my good friends, and we had a huge, huge goal from him last game um, in the final seconds, and the fans loved it. The crowd loved it. Shoot, me and Dan loved it. Just everybody loved it in general. So hopefully to see him put on some magic like he did that first time. Osborne sending it up. I bet it goes back to UConn. Tigers had it, but now they lost it. Back in UConn's hand as they're pushing forward. And they've still got it. Good job by Tea Time. And now they're just hugging and tumbling. What in the world? Oh, and he clapped in his face, but. You know, Tea Time, tea time is a hot one. It can take off at any moment, but he was clapping in the face of, I think that was um, our goal scorer from earlier. Hudson Jacobs, I think. He was just. Hugging him. I don't know why he was hugging him. It's soccer, not wrestling. But good cross right there to Plata Froilan. Floron trying to get one in, but that is off the mark. Close, but no cigar right there. Put a little bit too far on that left side. Ebos was ready either way, so it's going to stay 1 1 with almost less than two minutes to go. So some other scores for you. Westmore, a winner over Eisenhower, 3 nothing. Jinx and Bartlesville at the half, one nothing Jinx. Still in the first, Edmund Memorial 2, Piedmont 0. And a here at Kirkland, 1. So you know, this is going to be like another type of type of game, like the the girls game, like a nail biter. It's kind of the vibes we're getting so far. <laughs> Tea time jumps in out of nowhere. Down to a minute. Osborne blocks it in the middle and sends it out to Nagoi. It's Roberts right there. Roberts, correction. Thank you. He's going to get that one to Rosinski. Rosinski's going to reset, get it back to Javi. A fan screams, get back. Just a lot going on right now on the pitch. And yeah, Tigers are holding it right now. Osborne. We're in trying to get it to the middle. It's going to stay in bounds. We're down to 10 seconds. Time is Something bad happens right here. Two, one. Last shot on goal. Good no job. go. So it is 1-1 one, one at the half with <laughs> UConn and Broken throwing Arrow. punches. We've got a he fight. Just threw Hold a punch. on. I don't know how the ref didn't see that one. He clearly, Hudson Jacobs, this is not boxing, brother, man. What are you doing? Both referees are checking it right now. We're going to keep it right here for just a moment. He thought he was prime Floyd man with that. Whoop, whoop. What are you doing? And they're ch Both referees are talking right now. And I think everything is resolved, so both teams will go to the locker rooms respectfully, hopefully. So we are knotted up, one all at Kirkland. Broken Arrow and Yukon. Stay with us on Aerovision. Let us take a moment to reorient ourselves. Zoom out to a wider view. Look at the greater whole to see the beauty of this one body that is Broken Arrow Public Schools. And in doing so, 
May we be encouraged to continue graciously serving each day in the good and important work, reminded that we truly are better together. Thank you. All right, Broken Arrow. It's time to announce this year's District Teacher of the Year, Kyle Cole Rhodes Elementary. Dan Hawk here with AeroVision, and I'm with the Teacher of the Year, Mr. Kyle Cole from Rhodes Elementary. How special is this honor for you today? It is beyond special. It's it's a huge honor. Uh, th this district has, I fell in love with this district when I first started here. They brought me in, and as soon as I got here, I realized I'm not, I, I just can't see myself teaching anywhere else. It showed me love for teaching, but I've met so many people who have helped guide me and you know brought me here today so this was just such an honor and I'm gonna work so hard to represent Broken Arrow not just the district but the the city as well engaging young minds is the key goal as a teacher and as an educator for you you take it a step further by even building the furniture that these children sit on trying to get them engaged to understand education what, what does that all mean to you it means everything is, you know, it's part of me. That's one thing. If somebody comes to my room, I, if any, you know, thing they can say is like, I, it reflects my love I have for teaching. It's a part of me. And I want my classroom to be warm and welcoming uh, because that transition every day for those kids, even all year, can be difficult. So having a place that feels, doesn't, doesn't necessarily feel like a classroom. It feels like, you know, a place that they can take ownership of and come in and let that guard down. And so we can, you know, you know, teach them and show them that they're loved and teach them those skills. For you, I know that you, the wheels are always spinning as far as what you want to teach your children next. How does it all come together for you as an educator? It's just the kids kind of guide me on that one. It's just every year I wish I could say I could have an exact plan every year, but I really can't. They kind of tell, they tell me what they need to know, uh, whether it's just more life skills, social skills, or the academics. Um, you know, they they construct their own learning, you know, and I'm just, I feel like I'm a facilitator most of the time. I know that you're a teacher from the time that I met you. You're going to put yourself even farther, even with this honor. What's next for you as an educator? I can't go a day without thinking about my classroom. So I, I feel like that's just the little corner of the universe that I can make some change in and at least have these people that can send them off and they can make even bigger change. So that's my focus and that's what I think about all the time. I try not to think anything too big because they'll take care of that for me universe is out there have you thought about where you want to take uh, your significant other on this trip um she's she's the boss so i'm just as long as she lets me go with her i'll be okay with it so i'll carry her bags too so we get we can celebrate wherever we go and yeah and i'm, I'm just happy to be along congratulations Thank once again so much comes to training, it's all about pushing boundaries and embracing different styles to elevate your performance. After graduating from Broken Arrow High School, Joshua Farquhar decided to take his wrestling skills abroad, heading to Georgia, just south of Turkey. Little did he know how much this experience would shape his journey back to Broken Arrow. I've gotten to train with them the past couple months and I've progressed a lot. So having them come here, be in my home, and kind of get to see where I was wrestling, uh, it just makes me happy. Just as wrestlers strive to reach their peak, that same dedication is evident in the final details of Broken Arrow High School's new wrestling facility. This week has been truly exceptional, with wrestlers from across the globe joining in the excitement. We're hosting a training camp with the Georgia national team. Uh, they're going to wrestle in the Journeyman International Wrestling Tournament in Albany, New York later this week. And uh, they have the opportunity to come train here uh, for the opener of this new facility. Uh, it's just special, you know, not a lot of people get this opportunity, I don't feel like. And so to be able to learn from some of the best in the uh, world is really special. Many miles separate the country of Georgia and Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. The Georgia national team made a pit stop here at Broken Arrow High School to check out the new facilities and showcase their style of wrestling. Freestyle in America is getting more and more popular. So when we teach our stuff, it's pretty proud for us. 
from having them come and teach and uh, show us some of I mean what they work and matches. Um, it helps the Broken Arrow wrestling community kind of move forward in a good direction, I think. Beyond training, the Georgia national team really got a taste of Oklahoma life, checking out the Wrestling Hall of Fame in Stillwater and diving into what makes this state so unique. For us, this is a good experience, and for you also, I see we are happy, and you are happy, and guys, girls everywhere, and we change our things, our techniques, our many, many things. This this is so, so nice. We're trying to give them, I mean, like a good American experience. For a lot of them, it's their first time in the U.S. I think only two of them have actually been here. When it comes to wrestling, everyone's got their own moves and techniques. But what never changes is the love for the sport and the intense competition that drives us all. Not only do we want to have the best facilities, we want to create the best relationships for our wrestlers to improve, and this is just the first step. We trained, we had lots of fun, and I, I think I'll come back once again. Yeah. I, I really like here, being here. A new facility, new memories, and the love of wrestling, all set to be pinned down for an exciting future. The timing of it coming together, uh, with the Georgian uh, wrestlers coming in town and this facility being available is just basically the tip of the iceberg of the things that we want to do and continue to do. Now just knowing that this like side of the whole facility is ours, it's so wonderful. The future holds endless possibilities. At Broken Arrow High School with AeroVision, I'm Dan Hawk. this year's Beyond and Above winner. Please help me welcome to the stage Maurice Wallace, behavior coach at the Broken Arrow Freshman Academy. Dan Hawk here with AeroVision. I'm here with Beyond and Above winner Maurice Wallace. You, How was this night for you? I know that it was a whirlwind of a night, hearing everybody finding out where you'd stand, yeah. but what does it mean to you to walk away with this? I just It just means a lot not only to me, but to BAFA. Um, I think uh, there's a, a perception of BAFA out there with a lot of people, and I don't think they understand what we're trying to do for the district, and it starts with BAFA. So I think for me, I think it's, this award means a lot to BAFA, and if we can just continue to put that positive energy out there for BAFA, then we'll, we'll be all right. When I walked through and did the story with you, learning that your smile is contagious, but it's getting across to the kids. Tell me about how important that is as to why you got in the education? Well, every day, one thing I can always say, there's always, we never go through what kids are going through today. Um, what, what kids are going through today, I think that what we have to understand is uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what we're going through, it matters what, what, they're, what they're going through. Um, connecting and engaging with kids every day, impacting kids every day. But I think that um, what thing that we can do as teachers, as educators, as support staff, is just to make sure that we, we walk in with a smile on our face every day because that kid needs that smile. These kids today are going through a lot more than what we went through as kids, and I think if I do that and, and love every day and love to come to work every day, it, it's, it's a positive for the kids. The lesson that I learned tonight is it's more than just a teacher. It's yeah. more than the secondary individual helping with a student. Tell me about what that means to you to make that impact on a child. Well. Obviously, teachers are teaching my kids. I, I think that if, if if I have that impact with them, then they can take that on to the future. I mean, I've seen, you know, I have Miss Otten in there, who's who I've known since I was in fourth grade. Miss Green, who's as, who's an assistant principal, she's my science teacher when I was in sixth grade. Obviously, Mr. Rice, who's our principal, uh, Miss Silva, Miss Officer, who hired me. I think those are the key, those those people right there. As long as we as long as we have those type of people impacting those type of kids every day, they'll be able to come back and do the things that we're doing, not only as teachers, but 
but it supports that. But what does this honor mean to you oh, this evening? This is the top. Uh, I don't think I think a lot of people understand. If, if you know me from whenever I was younger, I think this is where this is where it's at right here. I mean, football is football. Uh, winning winning championships is winning championships. But being recognized in the academic world is is is, uh, is major. We always say in our locker room and the coach's office that we're, we're teachers first, but we're forward coaches. And welcome back to Kirkland Soccer Complex. It is one to one as we begin the second half of play. A lot has happened so far, especially in that last like 30 seconds. Yes. We had a wannabe Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather out there, but it is okay. I, I don't know if they gave a card or anything, but a lot of hectic stuff's going out there. I was actually um, there on. There was a card that was given, so. It was it given to a Tiger or a uh, Miller? Miller. Okay. 12. Right there. Off the pole. Oh, man. Heartbreak. That was beautiful. I mean, uh, not even 10 seconds into the match, and the Tigers are already trying to claw on the board. Okay, so, yeah, like back to the yellow card, though. Miller was given a card well deserved, but when I was down there, a lot of fans from both sides were being chirpy to each other and chirpy towards the refs. They were saying, Blues, give them a yellow. Things of that nature, so that was given, but a lot of hectic stuff out there. So, you know, the tempers have flared a little bit more than whenever we started. So, hope to see that that doesn't turn out into anything bad or injury issues later on in this game. And we just finished out with a clean, fair match to finish this out. Well, I think it goes back to both of these teams are 3 and 0 in the district, and the winner will claim the top spot in 6A3. So, you know, a lot is on the line with both of these teams, and both. Solid opponents as Broken Arrow is 10 and 1, 3 and 0 in the district. UConn is 7 and 3 and 3 and 0 in the district. So a lot at stake here at Kirkland. 100%. There's a lot at stake. So they're playing like there is a lot on stake, if you get what I'm saying. So hopefully we can just get it to calm down. Good. That's right there. That one gets in the back of the. Personally, I don't know if we can get a obvious a great a great cross down the middle, perfect header. I don't even know who headed it in, but they caught E Boss right off guard. Great, great strike down there with the head. That's a two one lead for UConn with thirty eight to go. Start to the second half. So now we just gotta get right back to it. And it's crazy to think if Ochoa had gotten that one like barely a little bit moved to the right, it would have been a two two game right now. So that just, it hurts to see that happen. Pebworth streaking down. He's got the ball in his hands, or feet, I shall say. Argentinian man gets across to Givens. Givens was blocked there by the defender. Good job by the defender using his body. Good slide tackle by Naranjo getting that ball to where he wanted it to be, but didn't get there right in time. It's funny enough that we got the, well, no, I'm not going to, but Hendrickson crosses that one, gives that one off to Osborne. Jack attack, just moving the ball forward, looking for an open man. Pebbert stricken downfield, looking for the open guy now. Little by little, good job trying to get in front of it by UConn, but Irvine's got it now. Tigers playing a little bit of keep away here. CB22 had it. Now to Irvine. Now to JH. Just crossing it downfield, looking for an open man. Hedrickson's taking it himself, putting on, moving the hips. Just Tigers, just, they're just playing it patient. They're not forcing it. They're not just like taking any risks. They're just taking their time, waiting for the opening to come to them. And that's the type of soccer that you like to see, just playing it patient. Now they're going for the deep strike. Good job by Robert staying there. He's going to shoot it, but that kind of a lackluster of a shot right there. Yeah, it was nowhere near the net, so. Kind of just took the shot to say he took the shot, it feels like, but that's going to go back to UConn for the top possession. And we're only, we're only four minutes into the second half, ladies and gentlemen, and it's just been back and forth already, so. 
A lot of fast-paced soccer today. It's funny enough, you know, keep heckling the juniors for this, but you guys got to wake up the next day and go to school and take a test. Shout out to sophomores and seniors who don't have to do that. <laughs> or teachers. Or no, no, not teachers, but, you know, we have some teachers in the booth here with us. So my condolences also go to them for having to wake up early and go to school as well. JoJo David, you can contact him at 9. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I appreciate you on the call. We learned uh, what the Miller mascot is. I know. If you guys did not get to see that history facts with JoJo and Dan, <laughs> um, go skip about 25 minutes back, and you'll see us talk about what a Miller is. For those that are tuning in now, JoJo, just explain to them what a Miller is. I'm going to have to pull up the definition again. My my brain's kind of shut down right now. We actually have some history geeks in this booth, as one of them is a history teacher. Just an interesting fact right there. Shout out Mr. Adley. But back to the origin of the Miller man. The name Miller was used to identify the individual responsible for opening the mill early in morning and locking the mill late in the evening. In the fall of 1930, Yukon Public Schools decided to honor the local industry and change the school mascot from the Yukon Panthers to the Yukon Millers. Many visiting teams thought that the Millers were small moths commonly found in sacks of flour. I can bet you like $50 that I don't even think I, a person who graduated from Yukon even knew that. So if you are tuned in, I'm glad you're tuned in. History Facts with JoJo and Dan. We'll see you soon. Yeah, check, check X, maybe Snapchat. JoJo's got you covered. <laughs> I just can't call it X. It, it, it's Twitter to me. Yeah, I shouldn't honor Elon. <laughs> <clears throat> 34 minutes remain here in this second half contest between UConn and Broken Arrow. That one goes back out of bounds. That's going to be bought at UConn. <laughs> Tigers getting their first goal in the first half of play. Seems that tempers have kind of died down from this first half of the game. So kind of everybody's just taking taking their chill pills, gotten their rest. So we're, see, we're seeing a, a clean, fair game as of right now. So and good steal right there by Osborne making his presence known. But they're going to take it right back. Both teams... Kind of going back and forth, not a real edge so far. There's been a couple of shots on goals for both other than the go-ahead goal. <coughs> Irvine. Tigers with possession right now. And is sinking into Nagoi. Morofsky's got it now. Gets it back to Charlie Baker. Didn't overthink that pass right there. Shout out, overthink per usual. Checo. You know, fun fact about our goalie, Evan Boss, one day. I don't know when this was, but it's a cool fact. One day he went partially blind in his left eye from getting hit by a ball. You know, the scares of being a goalie. But I just got that, found out that fact earlier today from him. So shout out to our goalie pushing through. At a point he was partially blind, but he's still playing the sport he loves and the position he loves. Was but it in practice or a game? We'll have to ask him. I wouldn't know. Good slide right there by Cam Pebb. And Morofsky's trailing behind, getting in front. Good effort by Morofsky. That's just, you can't teach effort. You can teach skill. You can teach ball movement. All those things, you just cannot teach effort. Effort is something you just give every day. And Morofsky just showed a beautiful example of that. And you know what's crazy? Number eight right there, Xavier Scone showed an example of not giving effort as that was now a turnover going to the Tigers. So Roberts will throw it in for B.A. Pavlos got it. Keeps control of it, putting some ball moves on him. Sheesh. Nice pass to Pacheco. Putting the skirts on him. 
31 minutes now. Osborne with the deep cross to Pacheco. And morovsky has got it with the shot. And it goes right to the goal. It's my sunshine right there. Gets that ball in that little left area. Not too much strike, strike of it, but I want to see him put that ball in the net for personal reasons, Alex Morovsky. Good ball control right there by Osborne. But ball gets right back in the air. I mean, Evan Boss can just clearly put his hands on this one. Let it bounce a little bit. A little bit of a feel right there. Take a bit of a javelin. Well, no, not javelin. What is it? Discus. Discus throw to it. So the wind gets back to blowing. Tigers at midfield. Over to Charlie Baker. Trying to send it into Pacheco, but the turnover goes right back, and the Yukon Miller sent it right out of bounds. Yeah, a lot going on. It's, it's really physical out there. I mean, you would think that soccer isn't a physical sport, but it is. Most people would think of football, like American football, as a physical sport, but soccer tends to get a, a bit physical, as we saw today, as we had a... Uh, uh, a punch by a UConn player, but kind of going towards that. Our football team is an example of a physical team as they're going into this new year. Got some buddies on that team as they got a got a bit of a QB battle going on right now between Titan Parker and Jeremiah Satemba for the football spot next year. I know, Dan, you're going to be on the, the football call for the 2025 football year. It's pretty exciting for you. I was never able to be in the booth for football. I had Maybe we'll have you as a special appearance this upcoming season. Oh, that'd be cool, but <laughs> I, I just think Blake Shy could add a third mic up in the booth. JoJo Cam, we'll call it that. <laughs> I don't know. I just I, – okay, I'm going to speak from the heart on here. I just – oh, that's a good cross right there, but it's going to go straight to UConn. I never understand – I feel like once you're a senior and you graduate, I – that first year of me out of college, I should not come back to the high school <laughs> more than more than two or three times. I find it really weird people who come here more than two yeah, or three times. Yeah, that would be the movie Days and Confused. Yeah, so. like I would come I, I want to come back here once at least for sure. Like I plan on coming to one one football game or if I'm if it one's in Norman I'll be at that, but I don't ever tend on going to anything else. I don't want to like be a well, we call it a super senior. I don't know if you guys call it that, but for us. Good cross right there. Ah, a little too much for, from Pebworth to not get it to Givens, but. So 28 minutes remain in the contest. Tigers got to get something to happen. I mean, the, the Lady Tigers in seven, it took them seven, last seven minutes, they got a goal in the net. And Tigers have 28 minutes. Darn it, we can make three goals happen if we're being honest, so. <coughs> Tigers are going to have to claw back and get something going here. Two goals to get to victory. So. What, what, did, what did KG say? Anything is possible. That's it's a good true. cross right there. It's up there. Good there. save right there by Austin Becerra. Yeah, Becerra just jumped up and pulled it down like rebounding a basketball. Speaking of jumped, you could say that's similar to the song. But Drake has the lyrics of jump man, jump man, jump man. Dan's favorite song. <laughs> As they all nod their heads. You know, UConn been pretty effective. Four wins out of their past six matches. They average four and a half goals a game. They've only given up a goal and a half. Longest winning streak of the season for the Millers. Three matches. Just got to make sure to just get it out of there. Can't let anything happen. Good job on Naranjo. Good, good no call too. They both kind of just collided for us at the same time. Yeah, I don't think that was intentional by any stretch. Not at all. So, good no call right there. Osborne gets it back to his teammate, Pacheco, over to Irvine. Irvine pushing the tempo. And Morovsky's there. Morovsky gets it to the almost to the back Did, of the net. Why didn't they call that? Oh man. They should have called that one. Oh, no, I, I hurt after seeing that one. That clearly went past. Clearly went past, man. They're saying no goal for Morosky. That's painful to see. 
Good moves by Baker. Define the odds and just, it's a good call right there, but now it's just, it's just, man, that was, you know, in, in soccer, in professional soccer, they have this thing called VAR, B-A-R, whatever you want to call it. And VAR, most people think it ruins soccer. I think it's really nice to have. It reviews, like, kind of like, it's kind of like instant replay. And it reviews offsides and goals. And the rule in soccer is if the ball somewhat anywhere passes, if the football passes that, that line in there, it doesn't have to hit the net. If it just passes the line of this goal. That ball clearly, clearly passed if we were to rewatch it. But that one just sucks. But hopefully we can just get it right back. Morosky getting ready for this cross. Or he could shoot this one too. Or he could potentially even send it up to Pacheco. He's going to take the shot. Now she's going to go straight in the hands of Becerra. So no goal. And the score remains 2-1. to one. That one just hurt to see, man. Yeah, that was tough. I would have tied this match up. Two big opportunities for the Tigers. Now, if you look back at it, that could have tied this game up. And, and two of them were just like just... Not even like a lack of missed opportunities or lack of effort, just like a lack of just luck, to be honest. If ref sees that one differently, they're calling a goal. If that one's just a little bit to the right, they're calling a goal. So. And that's a real tough judgment call for the referees. They don't obviously have instant replay. They can't use AeroVision's footage for that. So it's a judgment call. And so regardless of what we think, the outcome was that they said basically they didn't cross the plane. Baker on the near side. CB2-2. Up to Roberts. Good feed right there to Irvine. Irvine, Irvine feeding it to Pacheco. Pacheco gets tripped. And once again, no call. Man, it's just so much going on right now. Miss, well, missed goals, missed calls, just a, a lot of stuff. And the Tigers are just getting the bat end of the stick right now, but hopefully we can just end up prevailing at the end. So just gonna boot that one out, bruh. Said that one to Madagascar. That one sent over to Union High School. It looks like <laughs> that's more close. That one's more believable. It is getting a little chippy out there. Yeah, and now we're um, subbing in. Javi Magales, Josh Ngoy, and Didios. Smoker trying to get a ruling. I think he's talking about that on shot attempt from Morosky. Yeah, Not that it's going to matter now at this point. Clock has stopped. It's unique. I, I, I do notice, I, I wonder why Morofsky has his socks like kind of like ripped in the back. I, think, I don't know if it's like a style move or he does it on purpose. Or maybe it's just to stretch out the calves. Who knows? But it's just, it's cool to see a little a bit of a unique different style to it. Peverworth's got the ball. Keep in control of it. Good Osborne. Osborne good sends cross. a deep kick. That one's good. <laughs> Good go back. shot right there by Javi Maga or that's Angel Didios with the shot. The water squirt back there. Good goal. 2-2 two, two Tigers. Forget the last two chances because the, the score is 2-2 two, two now. Dan, that was beautiful. At the 23 and 5 second mark, Didios gets to the back of the net. It is now 2-2. Two, two. And Tigers have a chance here. They get one more. And that will be all of it to take the lead so we see the and to walk beauty. out of here at Kirkland with a win. Man, this is beautiful. Flipped the script completely. Two missed opportunities. We were bummed out. Beautiful cross. Beautiful feed from Osborne. Gets it to um, missed, missed from Ngoy and, and Pacheco. Didios back there for the follow through. Just picture perfect soccer right there. Yeah, the tempo has shifted for Broken Arrow. I mean, who doesn't love a, 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 a huge scoring game? Like a lot of goals to see a lot of this happen. Good cross right Two there. Two apiece. And Tigers threatening again. 
And that was close to a handball. I think that was a handball from what we're hearing. And yeah. the fans are letting the referees hear it as well. One thing, one thing I will say that's unique, I don't know if it's in any I mean, obviously, ba baseball, softball, soccer, a lot of heckling is more hearable in more of these sports. And, and you know, football, you, you're not going to hear it. You, you, you'll, you, you'd, rather, you'd probably hear a pin On the drop field, over, you will yeah. not hear it, yes. Yeah. In, uh, in the press box, you can hear it. Oh, press box, 100%. But, like, in the aspect of the guys on the field can hear what the fans are saying, saying very loud and clear. I mean, you as a baseball player in the past can agree to what I'm saying, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. So you can hear the heckling compared to any of those sports, and a lot is being said by these by both sides. So it's a lot going on, but Tigers and UConn through it all just prevail, just playing their game regardless of whatever it is is going on. So good feed right there. By that one's going to go out of bounds, though, and it's going to go right back to UConn. Roberts, header. But still right there by Javi. And then Goy's got it. Beautiful ball skills, but it just bad luck and it hits Javi where it didn't need to. It's a fall right there by a, a Miller player. And Javi's got it. He's got the speed to get there, but a little too much sauce on that one. It goes out of bounds. So with 20 minutes left, we are tied at two. Tigers hoping to not go to an overtime frame, just get the goal here and end it. Yeah, we want to see that happen. We don't want to have to go to another overtime or another PK. We just want to end it with the Tigers with a victory without having to do any, go through any of that. Send it back to Eboss. Hendrickson's got that one, crosses it. Sends it up to Pacheco on the header. And Irvine can get there. And he does, but it's going to go. It's going to come off his foot and go back out of bounds. Just to reset for you, Broken Arrow is 10-1, 3-0 and and in the district. UConn 7-3, and 3-0 and in the district. Winner of this match will claim the top spot in District 3. It's a big opportunity right there to make your presence known early on. Good spin move getting around the defenders right there by Scullin. It's a call going the Tigers' way just now. <laughs> Irvine up to Roberts, but turns it over to UConn. <laughs> Irvine making his presence no defensively, but and a good steal right there by Irvine. Just an underrated guy. He looks for the go. He gave the give, but there was no go. And that's going to go out of bounds. Irvine needed to slow it down right there. And I know he wanted the up tempo for his team, but they had plenty of support with other teammates up there on the ball that they could have got another goal. Roberts still right there comes Roberts. up with it. He just puts a little bit too much on it once again. It's the simple thing so far today. Yeah, a lot of simple mistakes here in this second half of play. <laughs> Ball still in their hands. He's got a player on the ground. Team captain on team captain. It's Nicola. It's 
going to go right in the hands of Boss. Like we said, the Broken Arrow Tigers victorious against Enid. So they swept Enid on the season. Broken Arrow softball team victorious over Bixby in a double header. So they are now 18 and 0 in the fall season, or excuse me, the the slow pitch season. Beautiful stuff right there. Roberts is going. He Roberts has plenty of green in front of him. Good stuff getting it to Ngoy. Good job by the defender being there. Didio's trying to go around the defender, but good steal right there by UConn. As the Millers have a bit of a Panther prowess in that moment, getting in front of the ball right there. Good flexibility by them to get in front of it. Shades of their old mascot. That's going to be got a couple goal kick. Got a, some scores for you at the 6A level. Westmore is a final over Eisenhower, 3 0. We got the man Hama Lama, Killian Hama coming in for Angel, or not pay, Hector Pacheco, excuse me. Bishop McGinnis, a winner over Edmund Santa Fe, 1 0. Bixby, a winner over Sand Springs, 1 0. 5 0 victory for Edmund North over Norman. And Sophomore, a winner over Union, 2 0. And the big one of the night, Mustang and Lawton. Mustang a winner 10-0 on the boys' side. Yeah, in soccer, if you go 10 up, up 10, it's mercy where you gotta, gotta end the game soon. This time, we'd like to thank our one club sponsors. First National Bank of Broken Arrow, since in St. John, Tulsa Bone & Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, your group and Quick Trip. Got two guys on the ground. Down to 15 minutes, and we are tied at two. <laughs> Tigers come up with it. Over to Charlie Baker. CB 2-2. Back to Hendrickson, Jack attack. Tigers just playing on ease. I mean, no need to rush anything. It's a 2-2 tie. They, the same game they've been playing, just play it easy. It's going to come to you. Yeah, just look at it. It is 0-0 all over again. Basically. Now when that touch luckily goes to Ngoy. I don't know if that was his intention, but that's going to be a corner, I think. And it is. Huge opportunity for the Tigers right here to make something shake. That's Hama Lama going back there to take this one. Corner kick for the Tigers. It's under 14 to play. Broken arrow with a corner kick. <laughs> Trying to get one across. The lefty. To not go to an extra frame. The kick. Good boot. Right where it needs to be, but... Ah, Javi's touch wasn't too clean. And then I'm not getting it where it needed to be, but Osborne just resets. Like I said, Tigers, just keep playing this way. It's going to come to you. That corner was a great opportunity right there. They're not rushing it. No need to force anything. Just play it nice and simple. And Goy gets it just like that, but loses it, and that goes back into the hand or to the feet of Hudson Jacobs. That should be a handball there. I don't know how that's not. His hand was all over the ball on the turf. If we were to look at the definition of the handball, just that picture right there would be the definition. But good strike right there. Wow. Wow. That was beautiful. If that goes in, I'm standing up and I'm applauding that, regardless of the team. This is a heck of a shot. Seems the post has had negative effects on both sides now, as we have had a, a one shot off the, off the post, and they've had one off the post as well. Roberts sending it into Nagoy, just a little long. Nagoy gets it to Javi. It's going to get one. It's going to get out there. 
Jones is going to, to Jacobs, who has it. Good spin move right there by the captain, Nicolo. And I think that's an offsides, but they're not calling it. Well, that was a clear offsides. That one off the mark. I heard somebody scream goal, but that clear was not a goal. Yeah, it hit the side of the net and scooted out. So the fans are getting excited, getting hyped, getting loud. Smario and Naranjo getting ready to check back in this game. <coughs> Good steal by Irvine, that's a clear call. Good call by the ref right there. First one that we've seen in a while called good for us, so. And Unk, Unk's gonna give a talk to Cam Peb. And the pair of Tigers loosening up. Yeah, it's Noah Allen and Mario Naranjo. And Jeremiah Rosinski as well. Irvine can shoot this one too if he doesn't want to take the cross. That's how we got our first goal was a lucky. Yeah, and Goy was not covered on that left side, so I think he was looking to get it to him, but Goy got He was trying first. to sneak in there up front and just Very boot much. it in. Very much so, but good touch right there by Jacobs. Keep control of it. Putting some moves on him, but Good job by Irvine staying there. Irvine's just a dog, man. He can do it all. Hamalama's got it. Good slid tackle, but he picks it up quickly. Good call by the main ref. It deflected off, and that's ball for Tigers. Haven't hearing mixed emotions from both sides on that call, but it's just a throw in. He'll live another day. Roberts, referees. Okay. This is a very neutral referee. I remember last referee, I said that that happened, and I said he had a parlay on the other team. <laughs> and you guys all laughed. But this one, he did it right. I no. do remember that, JoJo. But now it feels like now the ref is playing it fair and understanding that was on him and getting the ball back to where it needed to be. It's CB22, Charlie Baker. He's got it. Him and JH playing back and forth with Cam Peb in it. Throw him in the mix. He's going to cross this one. And that one goes through. Oh, man. And Goy jumped like Superman in that moment. Hit it on his chest. It was in the goalie's hands, fell out. But Bakera got control of it at the very last second. He's going to boot that one deep. His Javi's got it. That one's going to be out on the Millers. Or Whenever we refer to them, like, is it like you, the Yukon Miller or the Millers? I know we looked it up. Millers. Okay. It's Jeremiah Rosinski, Noah Allen, and Mario Naranjo come in for Jack Irvine, Angel Derios, and Javi as they get their well-needed rest. <coughs> Just some great effort put out there by those three. As the coaches celebrate Derios' goal, Everybody getting hyped, showing the man love. Shout out him. Baker in the backfield. CB22 looking for the open guy, taking his time. Just, just cruising by. <coughs> He's going to cross this one. He's got some guys down there. UConn just snuffs it out, though. Cam Pev, good stuff. He's been a dude all day today for the Tigers. From the from that goal, yeah, it's fair, fair, reasonable call right there. I can see where the ref gave that one. A little bit of a shove right there on that Close far to right handball, side. Though. Yeah, a little bit of a shove. So, refs gave that one to him. This 
we're inching towards less than seven minutes to go in this beautiful matchup, 2-2. Two -two. Just want to give a shout out to our One Club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Ascension St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, The Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. And then visit Tiger Threads at 220 North 23rd Street at Suite 61 at the new Event Center for all your Tiger fan gear located at the northeast corner of the new, new event center, as I said earlier, at the south end zone of the Tiger Stadium, open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. with additional discounts for BAPS schools staff members. It does not feel like 10 o'clock, Dan, does it? In some ways. <coughs> if it, it feels like it's 12. Yeah, I heard somebody in the booth say it, but I'm just going to remember what he said. Some wise words. It feels like it's 12, it's 12 a.m. right now, midnight. So last I said earlier, I feel for all of you that have to go take that test tomorrow. <laughs> but lucky enough, I don't have to. Boo-hoo. Tigers looking to get something going here in the final six minutes and ten seconds. Toronto cross that to Roberts. Uh oh. Ooh, Hama Lama with a shot. Didn't get it where it needed to be with the lefty. Oh, they're gonna say corner kick actually. So, so take that back. I'm sorry. That was a good shot attempt. It was just deflected. Went a little bit to the right. So Hama Lama's gonna get redemption with that shot and take this beautiful corner right here that can result in something very good for the Tigers. He's going to take this one with his right foot. Kind of shows how he's a little ambit. Well, you know how you're ambidextrous with your hands? What does it call for your feet? We need our uh, producer and engineer, Blake Ooh. Shy, to give us the stat information on that, if you could look that up for us. Good, good attempt right there by CB, Charlie Baker. Took that shot attempt, but... Something about like I think yeah I was talking about like his left and right feet or ambidextrous. Like is it ambidextrous or what is it called? Yukon threatening here, and that's gonna go straight to E Boss, keeping his hands active, getting ready for these potential PKs or golden goal coming up for him. It's gonna roll that up to CB Charlie Baker. Honestly, it's just another day for Charlie Baker, which is actually funny enough the name of his new song. So check that out. Ball in Jacob's feet. And Naranjo, just beautiful foot skills right there. Getting it right, splitting the defender with his feet, getting it, and now he's taking it up the field to Rosinski. Gets it to Noah Allen. Just going to reset and get it back to Osborne. Tigers going to have to work quickly. It'd be beautiful to see a goal <laughs> scored right here to get a 3-2. Jacobs putting a spin move on him. Put him in a spin cycle, Rajon Rondo style, but. Nicola has it, passes that one. It's going to go easily to Evan Boss for the easy save. You know, Evan, ba Evan Boss's um, goalie skills right now are out of this world. And speaking of out of this world, Evan Boss was actually Neil Armstrong in our gym night um, dance this year so he was on team team classic took that L you know classic but just speaking out of this world Neil Armstrong another cool thing about Evan Boss himself yeah we learned earlier in the contest that he went blind at one point partially blind partially blind I don't know, if that happened to me I'd get so scared I'd get so freaked out dude and that one's just gonna go straight into but Osborne jumps that one, but now they got an opportunity. But gets shut down immediately. Osborne, Osborne quickly with defense, JoJo. He just comes in there and just crushed their dreams of anything happening. Takes that ball right back from them. <coughs> Tigers have a chance here. Roberts with the ball. Roberts has it. Just got to get it down to control it. Putting some moves on it, still in the air. Good touch right there by Naranjo. But he loses it, and it's possession back in UConn. But Noah Allen's got it. 
He's going for the shot. Just wants it. Been working the left corner for the majority of this game. Yeah, it's just a lot on of those shots on goal. And we got Hector Ochoa coming in, the man himself, sophomore brother of Diego Ochoa. So we can get a little bit of that that glorious King Luck as he's coming in, checking in for I think it's Hama Lama, Killian Hama, getting back, getting out. It's a cross right there. Pebworth tries to go for the header, and that's going to go back to Charlie Baker. Minute 52, plenty of time, but they're going to have to work real quickly. Evan Boss comes out of goal for that one. He boots it high in the air. It's defying the laws of gravity there. And Goy's got it. And oh my gosh, oh, if Rosinski was there, man. Tigers getting a second chance, nearly with a second chance. Ooh, man. Sweet Mama Lou, that was something. We have an injured Miller. But they're gonna call off sides and the Yukon, the Yukon fans are frustrated. And they're coming off the stick. Goodness gracious. They're gonna start heckling these refs. I'm sorry, ref, but I think we gotta I think just some some cramping right there by a Yukon player. So with a minute six left, Broken Arrow will take over. I don't know if they're gonna I think they're just gonna keep him in. The guy who was crabbing, I don't know who it was specifically, but Glad he's all good. Hendrickson's gonna get this one to Osborne. I mean, Osborne's got the, he's got, he can he can cross this one and make something happen. And that's what he's doing. Rosinski with the header. Rosinski gets it back to Ochoa. And Ochoa's just gonna reset smartly with 45 seconds to go. Tigers, have a, Tigers have a chance here to get at least one more shot on goal. A little too high right there for Osborne. Couldn't control his own power as it goes way above the net. And that's going to be a cold goal kick. And I think the UConn's just going to boot this one, just say, screw it, just boot it out there and see what happens. <laughs> 14 seconds remain. Down to 10. The Tigers here do something here. Noah Allen's got it. Got to get something done fast, though. Five, Five seconds. Five seconds. Going to have to go quickly. Things just going to play it easy. And, and they're going to play it easy. So that will do. We'll go to overtime. UConn and Broken Arrow, stay with us. It's a 2-2 ball game. You're watching Tiger Soccer on Aerovision. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedists for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. 
at Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. If you and your family have been waiting for the perfect time to jump into your dream home, it's here. We make buying a new home as easy as it is exciting with quick credit approvals and great rates. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. First people put people first. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Tulsa Bone & Joint. Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, Kasha Hall, and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedists for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone and Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union, life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. And welcome back to the Kirkland Soccer Complex. Two halves not enough here at Kirkland tonight. We go to extra time. 2-2 ball game. Seems to be the story of the guys and the girls needing extra time. Yeah, Hopefully we can finish with a victory. The girls played two extra frames and then went to penalty kicks. Tigers looking to end it here quickly and not go to that. I think we all want this to be a quick and fast Tiger dub today. But also a very fun and eventful day today commentating as she learned some things about Miller and UConn and how we give everybody a nickname including Jojo David, the and magician. Getting partially blind and just a lot has happened today. So if you've stuck through it all today, just want to say thank you. It. Yep. We'd like to thank our one club sponsors, First National Bank of Broken Arrow, Since in St. John, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, The Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. One minute has passed here in this extra frame, and nothing near the net so far. That's going to stay ball to. So that everything is kind of quieted down because a lot of people have been out here since since that girls game or some of them might have been here since the JV game at like 4.30. So it's been a lot of soccer action today. So some of these fans are just tired. E-Boss booting it out of there, playing it safe. Good touch by UConn, but it goes right back to the Tigers. And he had Josh a long time ago, but they get it to him. And Goy putting some moves on him. Failed attempt of a slide tackle right there. Naranjo's got it to Irvine, but they get it back out. Osborne's ready for the cross. Sends it in. And Ball in the air. Play. Good save right there by Becerra. Getting his hands in there, making sure nothing bad happened. It's a good boot by him too, very deep. So it goes right back into UConn's feet. 
As Jacobs got it, putting some moves on him, but, but, but Roberts is right there. Just reset with you on AeroVision. Broken Arrow is 10 and one on the year. 3-0 in conference, UConn 7-3, and 3-0 in conference. Going for the cross. It's a good looking one too. Good save by Ebos. So I believe it was Pedro Villabre that had the opportunity for to get that ball in the net, but barely missed it as Ebos' presence was too much to handle for him to hit put that ball in the net. It's gonna stay 2-2. Two -two. We would love to see at least one Tiger victory come out of today. Never want to end, end it off going 0-2. Down to 6.30 here in this first overtime frame. Nice slide tackle from Pepworth. If you want to catch AeroVision next, we will be live streaming softball on April 15th, this upcoming Monday, 4 p.m. versus Berry Hill, and that'll be a doubleheader, so stay tuned for that. And then the following day on April 16th, we have soccer, Steelwater doubleheader, 6 p.m., Girls, 8 p.m. Boys, that will also be streamed. And then Friday, Senior Night. So a lot of AeroVision stuff going on next week. Also next week is the start of Smile Week, our philanthropy week for our Make-A-Wish girl, Brooklyn, four years old. So a lot of exciting stuff coming out from that soon. And then also April 12th, Pep Assembly. The Pep Assembly theme, the final countdown. Stay tuned this Friday. Yeah, what do you got, JoJo? Three weeks left of school for you? Oh, thank goodness, dude. I'm just like, <laughs> so drained. But aren't we all? Down to five minutes. And Goy gets in front of that one. Good job by him. Goy picks it up. Gets it to Didios. Putting some moves on. Passes it to nobody. But we get possession right of it as pepworth has got it. To Irvine, he's gonna take the shot. Ooh, had a bit of a backspin to it, so it looked like it was going in. But good save right there by Becerra. And just a reminder: if the Tigers are unable to score in this overtime frame, they'll go to a second overtime frame. Yeah, that was that was a call right there. Can't be mad. I think they're gonna give Pebworth a yellow on that one. Nope, they're not. Thank goodness. I don't think he was trying to boot that one with intent of he was frustrated or anything. He's just like kind of booting that one before he heard the whistle or anything like that. So no bad intentions whatsoever. So good call by but good job by the ref keeping that, keeping the um the card in his pocket. And Gavin Dilly, Lil Dilly number fifteen, getting ready to check in for the first time tonight. That is a good kick there, but Tigers. Tigers on top of that one, make sure nothing bad tough happens. Defense. Just gonna just clear it out of there, play it smart. It's got some backspin the ball has. Just gonna go back. Oh, that was a handball. Just gonna let it play. And Roberts has got it. Roberts has played great today, honestly. Offensively, kind of that, that mid position, that midfield position right there he's played, he's done great so far. On the attack side, defensive side, just everything. You get that one to Ngoy. Goy putting the moves on. And that's going to be a corner kick, and that's what we want to happen as we have been excellent with those. And I think it's going to be Jack Irvine who's going to take this one right here. I think it is Jack. But first, Gavin Dill is going to sub in for the man himself. Big man, Hector Pacheco, big 9-9 coming out. I think they just wanted to get some quickness in there, to be honest Yeah, I got to get some fresh legs. I mean, hope we can get a goal right here, finish it out. Irvine with the cross, and that one's just going flat out, and Jacobs, it's its all him, but Dilly's there with the fresh set of legs, keeping up with him. Just going to play it easy. He slows it down. No need to over-pursue, but also no need to kind of, that's clean. I don't i don't see a need for a call right there. He didn't do anything. No, I don't, I, I know UConn's not happy, but that looked pretty clean. 
you can kind of like no you would you would know if it was clean or not a lot of the times I think it's gonna be it's gonna stay Tigers Tigers get the ball right back. Thought it was a handball, but they're not going to call that one. That was straight up handball. Good ball movements by Scoen. He's taking it's the one man show for Scoen. Kind of a ball hog. Gives it up to Captain Nicolo. Nicolo with the rock. Putting some moves, some crispy moves, some might say. Goodness. Gets it to Hudson. Ball in the air now. Good job by Naranjo just getting it up there, getting out of anywhere with bad. Got Jack Hendrickson, the NSU commit, and good job by Roberts, making his presence known. And now Ngoy's got it. Tigers just flipped the script completely. Goes right back to Broken Arrow. Naranjo pushing. He's got numbers too. Good cross right there to Dill. Deal with a little bit of a push. A little bit of a push there. Not too much. So, so, some slight, so nothing too crazy. Refs let it play as they should. And good job right there by CB22 using his head to get it out of that area. Yeah, Charlie Baker at the right spot at the right time as we're down to a minute here in the first overtime frame. Still got one more after this one, so. Good cross by Peb. That's going to stay Tiger's side anyway. Another cross. Another header. A lot of headers going on right now. That's another one. Down to 40 seconds. Nagoy stretches it. Oh, man. And oh. that gets to the back of the net. Angel Derrios with a double header. Two goals in one night. Goodness gracious. That is legendary as the fans get hyped. This game is over. 3-2 final for Broken Arrow. They move to 11-1 overall, 4-0, and stay atop District 3 standings. We'd like to give a shout-out to the Broken Arrow soccer team with this big-time win here at home against UConn. The girls fall on penalties. 3-0. We'd like to thank our one club sponsors, First National Bank, Broken Arrow, Since in St. John, Tulsa Bone and Join, TTCU Federal Credit Union, the Arrow Group, and Quick Trip. We'd also like to thank our Aerovision crew, Antonio Hurling, our stream director, Greg Spencer, director of Aerovision, Blake Shire, our producer and engineer, my color analyst and partner in crime, JoJo, the magnificent David, and a Shout special out. thanks to all the students that helped out with the broadcast this evening. JoJo, any final thoughts? Beautiful game. Shout out Dan the man, Dan Hawk. Hawk. See you guys again next week. That'll do it. Tigers win in overtime. 3-2 to two over UConn.